Hello and welcome to CNET Live. Guess what? This is the big one. It's Apple's October event. We were, we were expecting not just two, but maybe even four new iPhones and some other devices. Now this is where the fun begins, 30 minutes before the Apple live stream kicks off at 10 a.m. Pacific, which is in 30 minutes time. We have a fun pre-show plan for you up until then. And if you wanna watch the Apple live stream in 30 minutes, you'll need to switch over to another tab and a take a watch because Apple does not let us restream the broadcast. However, we are gonna be having a lot of fun and chatting all throughout. So without further ado, let me make the introductions for our CNET live crew. My name is Lexi Savides and I am joined by Vanessa Hand Oriana. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> we have Scott Stein down below in our Brady Bunch boxes. Hello, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. And a very special guest, Patrick Holland down there. Hello, Patrick. Welcome to the show. Well, hello. Good to see you. Good to have you all in our little... I'm just working out the right way to look the uh, right directions to see. <laughs> <laughs> and behind the scenes, we have Stephen Beecham and Brian Van Gelder. Shout outs for making this show everything that it is. All right. So as I mentioned, we're expecting four new iPhones today. And the invitation looks like we're focusing on everything speed. So that might mean 5G. All right. So Patrick, let's start with you because I know you've been following the Apple rumors very closely. Now, just give us like a top line overview of the four new iPhones that we're potentially going to see today and how are we going to choose between them? Well, I think you said it best. There's four new iPhones. <laughs> um, I think uh, if, if speaking of rumors, like there's rumors coming out right up until we went on air just now um, with leaks of supposedly the four new devices. So we won't go as far as to show you what those are, but uh, in case you want to actually enjoy the event and be surprised. But we'll say that there are four iPhones. So if you think of it like last year, we had the iPhone 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. We're going to have the iPhone 12. 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, pretty easy to understand. But the fourth phone will be another version of the iPhone 12 and it will be smaller. And in fact, it's rumored to have a 5.4 inch screen. And if you think of that compared to the current iPhone 11 Pro, which has a 5.8 inch screen, that's even smaller. In fact, it's rumored to be smaller than the current iPhone SE, which for people like me who are excited about Small phones, that's pretty exciting, especially since it will likely have an OLED screen, just like all of the devices coming out. Um, some other big things, as you mentioned, they're all going to have 5G, which we'll talk about more in a moment. Um, and some other big news is probably comes to the camera side of things where um, probably the pros will have LiDAR, which we'll talk about that pretty soon. As far as prices, this is where it gets kind of interesting. These rumors have not been as solid, but it's rumored that the 12 and uh, 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max will have the same price as the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. That's 999 and 1099. That's kind of cool, but it gets interesting with the 12 and 12 Mini. So the iPhone 11 currently is $700. The iPhone 12 Mini is rumored to cost. $700. And then the iPhone 12 would actually be $800. So that's a more expensive phone. So that's kind of the overview. There's some crazy colors, some things about U1 chips, but that's kind of the, the big headline. Four iPhones, probably called 12, probably won't be called the 11S. Well, thank you, Patrick. It sounds like you've uh, given us the whole rundown of the event, so we All don't right. need to watch See it, right? Later. We got, yeah. we good. That, that's it. That's the end of the show, right? <laughs> well, you alluded to like a lot of things that we were expecting, obviously the camera technology, um, but specifically like 5G. Like this is an interesting one because this is going to be the first generation of iPhones potentially that have 5G on board. Now, I wanted to kind of get your read Scott in particular, because you cover a lot of AR, VR stuff and 5G as well. I think the interesting thing is going to be how is Apple going to market this and sell 5G as a technology that's actually useful for things? Because I mean, yes, speed is important, but what do you think Apple can really do to market it to people that don't really know 5G and don't really understand the capabilities of it? I think when it comes to AR, a lot of that stuff is still kind of far off in the future. You know, that the possibilities uh, involved right now from what companies talk about is a lot of cloud rendering and you know stuff that we see now with game streaming but taken even further to stream effectively 3d experiences that would make the devices you use 
be a little more compact. I don't think Apple's ready to go that that route yet. That's like more of like Qualcomm talks about stuff like that. But I, I think yeah, maybe now it's much more practical. I think that you know, and, and I'm I think more like Patrick talked about it too. But I I think that people care right now about reliable connectivity and uh, and and speed is also good. So I I think if they can talk about those things in an emerging 5G landscape where everything's not nailed down yet, I, I would expect that to be the focus. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point. And and the other sort of like top line feature I know people have been talking about, Vanessa, I know you've covered this many times as our Apple rumors reporter um, on the Apple core here on CNET. You've been talking about, you know, the high refresh rate screens for a while, like we're talking 90, 120 hertz that, you know, many other phones in the market have. Do you think that this is the year that we're going to see uh, a high refresh rate screen from the iPhone? Because I really hope there is one, but I don't know what your thoughts are on that. <laughs> Look, I wanted to be optimistic, but I feel like because I've been covering the rumors for so long and it seems like the one, the, the closer you get to the event, the closer they get to reality. And the latest rumors are suggesting that probably not. So I want to stay optimistic, but I also want to be a realist. So I'm going to go ahead and say no. If anything, maybe the pros. Okay. Yeah. And that technology has been out there on the iPad Pro for a handful of years. And, and so it wouldn't be a great leap at all to expect that on the right. Pro models. I, I, I've, I've been expecting it to arrive. And it's basically like a variable refresh rate where it effectively looks 120 hertz, but Apple doesn't call it that. They, you know, they they emphasize the, the range from, from 120 hertz down to just a very low refresh rate on, on static screens to optimize for battery life and performance. So yeah, I mean, Sure, I would expect that on the pros. If not, I'm like, why isn't it here yet? Yeah, I think that's a that's a great point. The other thing that I'm I'm also personally excited about is something that Vanessa obviously has been talking about for a long time. And you know, as far as I can remember back, as soon as the iPhone, or maybe this was even before the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro was announced, a radical redesign of the iPhone 12. Like this is this has been in the works for such a long time, right, Vanessa? Like. You know the potentially going back to the old look like we saw with the iphone um, 4 and 5 and of course with the latest ipads that have come out now this this has got to happen right this is this is almost a guaranteed <laughs> i think so i mean one of the biggest clues is probably the fact that all and this is not a guarantee but all the case makers have already started making cases for these flat edges that you talk about lexi so <laughs> It'd be, I'd be surprised if Apple doesn't do some kind of redesign. We've been talking about it for so long. And also because people wait, I mean, it's the big, big, the, the big cycle is usually the redesign. And so I think Apple, we've all been kind of bracing for this big cycle uh, where everybody's going to upgrade the, or not everybody, because let's face it, it's 2020, but where people have been holding out to um, upgrade their iPhone to the redesign. So I think, I think this is definitely the year for the redesign. And yeah. And, we saw it in the, we've seen it in the iPad. There it is, Scott. For long enough. This is just it. Just give it on the iPad. Give well, it on let's the Let's see. Sneak peek. That's the, the redesign. Hey, it's just, shri right. just shrink it a little bit and that makes the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> the, the flat edges, the LiDAR display. Exactly. So I can, I, I just expect it. I would like USB-C. Um, Can you call? Don't expect that. Yeah, exactly. Make a phone yeah, make call. Make a giant call. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good design, you know, and then Bring it, bring that flat, bring, bring those flat edges back. Bring yeah. the flat edges back. Well, yeah. well it's also we, funny because like... people get hyped about all that stuff. And I am one who does not like putting my phone in a case, but those beautiful flat edges are going to go in a case. That beautiful redesign will go in a case. So <laughs> that's true. That way too. But a clear case, maybe. Also, <laughs> I feel like Patrick, you and I are the most important part of this redesign for us. And I don't know, I'm just kind of speaking for you, Patrick. But no, I know where you're going with this, is, so go for it. It's the small, you know, like that's that's just as as much as it's gonna be the same form factor as the other ones, we haven't had a small iPhone in so long, Patrick. And then we're I think you and I are probably the only ones. This is so weird because it was like five years ago when we were so excited about the bigger screens, and every time a screen got bigger, we were like, Woo! And now we're like the opposite because they've gotten so big that now we're just going swinging the other direction and i think that's it, probably the most exciting redesign for me is no no and i think you're i think it, it's going to be exciting if it's true i'm not holding my breath until i see them show the small phone I know. but i think the, the, the challenge with that though is 
we want things that we like on regular phones, like a good battery life, which is, has been kind of challenging for Apple up until the 11 year, 11 Pro. Um, and that means you need to have a big battery and you want that A14 processor, which is probably gonna add all these cool um, effects and processing to run iOS 14 and some things we might not know about iOS 14 is what I'm also coping with here today um, that are specific to this phone. But yeah, to be able to hold that small phone and if it is indeed smaller than the iPhone SE, then that bodes well. And there's a lot of people out there. If I look at the comments on some of the videos I've done that we've done on small phones or the iPhone SE, there's a lot of people who want this small iPhone. So we're not, I don't think we're alone. We're gonna start a support group for small phone people in, on Facebook. <laughs> so no, well, I know like Lynn Law, our fellow editor, Lynn Law, <laughs> she wants a small phone. I don't know if she wants it to be an Apple phone, but she wants a small phone. Right. So yeah, the, have... iPhone, the iPhone SE was great and it was small and then the yeah. iPhone SE got bigger. Well, like, but the imagine one that if everybody like... liked. Yeah. yeah, and and we all wanted just the iPhone SE, but just take away the that, bezels. The little, yeah, the little one from the yeah. from the iPhone five. And then you would have like a half day, half yeah. day's worth of battery life on that, probably, <laughs> and like yeah. one camera that's subpar. You know, that's the thing. You want the modern camera, you want the battery life, but you can't have it all. So. Well, you guys, have I have all, Patrick. I have a last minute. You know, some of you out there have might have seen last minute spoiler alert. So this was at the eleventh hour. Um, prolific leaker Evan Blass did put up some leaks of the alleged design of the uh, new iPhones, and uh, yeah, we we might just quickly flash it on screen now. But we don't want to spoil too much because that kind so of takes the fun out of it. So close your eyes if you don't want to see what it might look like. But uh, yeah, we did see um, Evan Blass do release, did release some of those photos this morning. And yes, I think we are going to be getting that design that you're looking for and the mini, mini phone too. So uh, yes, well, we'll see. We'll see if that actually comes true in, uh, you know, about 15 minutes, we'll find out. But, you know, before we get to that, let's chat a little bit about, you know, we were talking earlier off the top about the camera technology. I mean, you know, this is a big a like big love of mine is talking about cameras and all of the associated things that we can potentially see these cameras doing on the iPhone 12. We haven't really seen um, sort of much, uh, I mean, obviously there's been a lot of things behind the scenes that have been developing slowly throughout the Apple camera technolo technology, particularly on the computational photography side. So by that, I'm talking about things like HDR, deep fusion, and even night mode, sort of doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, leveraging the hardware to be able to do completely different things. But I think, you know, is this generation going to provide anything dramatic when it comes to, to camera technology? Because you see other manufacturers doing crazy optical zooms. We're talking like, you know, 50 times uh, digital zoom, 10 times optical zooms. You know, is this the generation where we're actually going to see anything more than two times from Apple? I really hope so. I really hope well, so. There, what we, we, I say we do have rumors that, um, and this is one of those other weirder ones, that the 12 and possibly the 12 mini would have a three times optical zoom. And that the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max would have a four times optical zoom. Because I do think people want to get, be able to get closer. And I know companies like Apple and Google pride themselves on the computational photography, even when it comes to zoom, but a digital zoom is a digital zoom. And when you see maybe not the 100 times zoom on like the Galaxy S20 Ultra, but even just 20 times zoom, how good that is compared to five times zoom on an iPhone, you're like, all right, I'm missing out on something. And I know we're going to talk about LiDAR, but I think another interesting case of that is you have ways to improve the existing things. So you can use LiDAR to get autofocus for that. would be great for like nighttime shots where you can't physically see sometimes the subject because it's so dark. You also have the use of like LiDAR just to speed up autofocus or do things like portrait mode and depth effects. So I'm excited to see more about that. And I'm also, you know, they've been pushing video. I think they're, they're still kind of out front of most phones. I think Sony's catching up video wise, but most phones don't pay much attention to the quality of that video, the image quality and the low, low noise and stuff that Apple's been able to do and that beautiful HDR they have in video. So I'm hoping that we see some more polish with that because as we all know, we're using our video a lot more, especially on the front facing camera. And I'm curious to see what that's gonna look like. Are you, are you taking a lot of selfies at home or selfie video, talking, Patrick? Is this um, sort of, uh, both, you know? Right? Yeah, or are you yeah, just talking about uh, like FaceTime? Because I, I hope it's the, the former. I hope you're taking a lot well, of selfie videos. 
No, I think it's it, both. Well, that, um, that, and I, you can't ask people to hold your phone and take a picture of you anymore. I mean, you can, but it's like. That's true. Then you have to mask, disinfect like, it, though. Disinfect. You know? Yeah, like yeah, your, you your, know. your one year old might not be able to do such a good job. It's like, ah. Yeah, that's, that's the whole thing about Zoom, social distancing. So, like, the more, you know, you let people be very far away so I can get closer to them. <laughs> but then uh, you'd have to the take camera. a Zoom, Zoom in picture of a stranger and then, like, email the, I don't know. It's. It's just times. Times are. I mean, I'm not even. Yeah, I don't even see my mom like closer than ten feet away. So you know, <laughs> I, I I could take advantage of that. I agree with Patrick. Like the last few, last seven months. I don't even know how long it's been. W whatever time period this has been. Uh, <laughs> time we, is irrelevant, Scott. Right. We live in a the void. <laughs> the infinity void uh, of this year. <laughs> I, I've been using nonstop uh, the iPhone 11 Pro to shoot CNET videos. And it has worked out pretty well, but it also makes me really appreciate uh, all the things they could still be doing. Like I've come out of this thinking that the more Apple can become a pro camera company, the better. In fact, like I would still like to see Apple make a camera. Like, a, I mean, they are making a camera, but I mean, just make a camera dedicated to camera people and like, you know, pro it out all the way. I think would be a logical direction for them at this point. It's, it's one of their strongest suits. And I still see some limitations with the photo. For video, I think it's fantastic, but I, I, I do wanna see a lot of um, additions. Going to the LiDAR thing, I, I, I'm very curious about that. I've been playing with LiDAR on the iPad Pro. And you know, to be clear, like I don't think it's used much for photography on the iPad Pro. It's a little bit separated from that. It, it, it kind of, like Patrick was saying, it, it scans a room could be used for potentially some some focus things like that. I'm really curious if Apple maybe blends them a little more on the iPhone, uses LiDAR plus the camera to do more computational things. You're already seeing companies doing 3D scanning uh, using uh, the iPad Pro. And that, that stuff's been around for years. Microsoft had been into it, going back to Google Tango phones. Like, you know, the idea of this tech tango. has been out there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a tango reference. You and my tango. Wow. Old school. <laughs> yeah. So um for those who are like, this has been out there, it has, but the technology has improved. And I think that now that Apple is even more than AR, is really involved in the 3D object and asset landscape, USDZ, that stuff's showing up in websites. It can help you virtually shop for things. You could scan stuff. I mean, there's a lot of practical work from home applications to that. Maybe these iPhones are th are better 3D scanners uh, to to incorporate stuff like that. So I I think that's a really interesting direction. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping for a lot of demos like that too today because I mean I think we all remember you know in the past we've seen some pretty sort of mind blowing stuff um, on stage. Particularly I remember the Minecraft stuff from a few years ago. Uh, you know that was just you know that was something else completely. Vanessa, you were just about to jump in. Well, I mean, I'm going to just talk about the feature that I want to see, which you all might disagree because it's it's faking something that you all hold you, near and dear to your heart, Patrick and Lexi, which is the um, live folk. Okay, now I'm mixing up um, portrait, portrait mode, mode. Effect yes. on the video. There we go. Yes. Um, you know, and it, and it's something that I didn't like. I've always talked about it. Samsung did it not particularly well on the S20 and the Note, and actually even the Note last year. Um, I'd love to see it from Apple, especially on the front camera, because you do have the Face ID sensors that could feasibly mass map your face and probably do a decent enough job to get away with vlogging um, with, for portrait mode, which I think would be really great on the mm. iPhone, um, just because of all those sensors in the back. And then now on the back even too, if you if we are talking about the lidar sensor, I know like there are a lot more practical ways to use the lidar sensor, but I personally would like to see if Apple can use that to do a to, to do like a credible portrait effect on video. And maybe I've been waiting for it for a long time, and I hope this is. The I end. know. I I, I, we've we've spoken. It. Yeah, we've spoken about this for a long time, and I I completely agree. It is something that I I personally would love in terms of like using it on an ongoing basis for many people. I mean, you couldn't really use it for anything with the fast moving subjects. It would really just be for a static shot. But I think that, you know, us being video producers, we're all kind of thinking like, how can we make our shot look better with the least amount of effort? And I think that right. would definitely help. Yeah. Well, um, so and I mean, full disclosure, I've been using the S20, the broken one that we used for a drop test. I've been using that for a lot of the videos that are that are static, like from with this background, because 
you know, obviously you introduce anything into the shot and it's, it, it renders it useless, but it, it does work if you are vlogging. And I feel like now, especially even for, for chatting on video, even for Zoom calls, that might be something that, that, that's more helpful this year in particular than other years. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great point. Um, quick time check. It is nine minutes until the Apple Live event starts. Uh, don't forget that we cannot restream the Apple Live event, but we will be talking throughout. You can open up a new tab and go to the, uh, the Apple website or Apple YouTube and watch the live stream there. And then come back and leave us open in another tab. Come back if things get a little bit, you know, Oh, and we'll we'll keep you company throughout. So looking forward to that. That's starting in oh, eight minutes now. Um, we'll, we'll let you know as soon as the live stream starts as well to give you a heads up. Okay, we've spoken a, like a lot about iPhone. Uh, let's shift gears to the other kind of potentially rumored products that we might get today. The most intriguing thing for me, I don't know about you all, but it's like the new wireless chargers that are being talked about. Not air power, because that's <laughs> dead, um, but these new MagSafe style charges these are really intriguing to me what do you all think i think that um i, I think the idea of magsafe always appealed to me for laptops I, I can't stand that i feel like i'm always about to pull the laptop off the desk now and so i think that's great what, what i'm not wild about is another proprietary uh port system and USB C is out there ready to move on to an iphone and i feel like apple's just gonna skip that right by and if they go the MagSafe direction, I think it could also open like, what if that becomes a docking system for data or all sorts of cool stuff that you could do, but would that be the eventual like port-free iPhone in a year or so? Oh, port-free yeah. iPhone. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I'm so, ready. I don't know if I'm ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm really no, I'm not, not ready at all. I don't, I don't, I don't want it's that. It's gonna take I, courage, guys. It's gonna <laughs> a lot of courage. <laughs> So that's, those are my thoughts in short on it. Yeah. Uh, it sounds, it's, that's a good point. I mean, I, I don't think <laughs> I'm ready for yet another proprietary connector either. Patrick, or, or what about you? Are you yeah, team, team MagSafe? I'm still team AirPower and I will be until, I mean, it's dead. I know, but I will be team AirPower forever and ever and ever. <laughs> well, I think the, the one thing with wireless charging is the speed of it too. So if the rumors are right, and one of the reasons this thing's coming out, is to charge it faster, quote unquote, wirelessly, even though it looks like a giant circle with a giant wire. So it's really just magnetically. But anyway, we'll get past that. But I think that the, the point I'm trying to say is that uh, I'm curious about it. I, I don't know, again, like if that's something you'd have on your desk or in a car and you just like slap it on. Um, I don't know what the MagSafe part is. Is it for tripping? Is the cable really long? Because that would be cool, a long cable. A long cable that, quote unquote, doesn't fray. That would be that would be high technology here. Oh, that sounds fancy. Uh, and the other the other product is this mini HomePod that we might be getting today as well. Uh, I have not been excited about the HomePod in particular. Like it sounds great, but it's too expensive for what it is. And you know, I don't feel like it does enough, especially with the Siri integrations. Sorry in advance if I triggered anybody's voice assistant <laughs> by saying that. I always tend to do that. Um, but yeah, it, you know, we've seen like the actual current HomePod at the moment, you know, cylindrical, you know, it looks, or I mean, I think there was a big point made that it looks good in anyone's living room. And I don't particularly like the styling. I wonder if, you know, we're gonna see an evolution of styling on a mini, but there's so much competition in this space. You know, can Apple still really compete at this late stage? I'm going to jump in because I am, I've been working for CNET for 70 years now, and I have yet to ha get any kind of voice assistant in my home, even though I'm like the prime target because I've got kids. I, I would love to have something that I can just dictate orders to, but privacy is huge for me, um, especially because we kind of know all the privacy concerns that have come up with other voice assistants not to name names, but you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> so, you know, I think that there is an opportunity for Apple to come in. I think the HomePod, the original HomePod was just way too expensive for a lot of people, especially with the other, if they, you know, even though it's, you can't compare them, but comparing to the other uh, players in the market, the, home, the HomePod just was very expensive and probably didn't provide as much um, as, as that price. But I think the HomePod mini, Apple still might have a market here for people like me 
who are weary of bringing in a device that's going to be listening to you all the time. Not to say that I 100% trust Apple, but I probably trust Apple a little bit more than the other two companies to have in my home listening <laughs> into my conversation. So I think, Lexi, you're right. Like They probably won't get as big as, as Amazon or Google in this department, but I think there is a market. And I think bringing in a mini might tap into that market more so than the more expensive HomePod. I will, however, I don't know if you guys have just seen the leaked images that we just got of the HomePod mini. It looks like a giant, like not a giant, but like a ball. So I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like a cauldron actually. Like, you, you know, you can make little- Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble, cauldron, burn and fire, bubble. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, that's I like one of those return like, to the cauldron. oil urns, you know? Yes, it does. Some so, essential oils in there. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Uh, but Patrick, you are gonna jump just in just a minute to go watch the stream. Um, but just final thoughts from you. Are you are you gonna get about it? The are you excited? About the cauldron. Are you excited about a, a potential HomePod <laughs> mini? I mean- I, yes, I think no. my real my thoughts real quick is I think the HomePod was something really different that Apple didn't really explain very well. And because there's other speakers out there that were cheaper, I don't think people really understood the difference. That being said, mm -hmm. hopefully this will not only bring that price down, cauldron or not, we can talk about <laughs> whether or not it actually becomes a little more functional than um, some of the like Echo speakers and Google Home stuff. But yeah, I'm less excited about that stuff. I'm like you, I'm very um, non um, assistant in my household. And, but the thing I'm most excited about is the iPhone specifically that mini, and we didn't talk about it, but yeah, yeah. the blue color looks pretty cool too. Minis. <laughs> so oh, it sounds I have, good. I have so one actually, I'm going to say goodbye mini. real quick. Yeah. And you yeah. Guys Patrick have, has to leave. He's going to go watch the event. These guys. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to hear my bells when I leave. That means I get my wings. Okay. <laughs> oh, ding dong. Okay. Good Bye, luck Patrick. getting into the event. Bye. All right. Patrick, oh, Patrick, Patrick I'm still yes. imagining that people are going to uh, to, to Me too. Events. I know. Uh, well, this is Apple's third virtual event now for 2020. And I feel like, yes. you know, they it's really going to be, uh, I mean, to be honest, the WWDC presentation was a really smooth, seamless execution. And so was the Apple Watch one. So, I mean, I'm expecting more of the same and really just to have everything down. I wonder how long we're going to be expecting today's event because there, there's quite a few oh. products and there's going to be a lot of things to talk about, specifically One hour around 20. 5G. One hour, 20 minutes. Is that your bet? All okay, right. What, what's your are bet, we Vanessa? taking bets? Yeah, we're taking bets. Come on, get your bets okay. at home. I'm going to do an hour, 30 minutes, although I hope less because whatever, however long I can hold it and not go to the bathroom. Okay, I'm gonna say two hours because why not? Let's be self-indulgent. I want some no! Air Force One. I want some Craig Federici on my screen for two hours. Let's do this. Can I, can I bring up something about the mini that I think is the most interesting part based on yes. some reports yes. that we didn't get into, but it ties into the weird tracking, air taggy AR stuff. Um, the U1 chip, the, the often and yet also little discussed U1 chip uh, this this chip that was in last year's iPhones that should be in a lot of Apple's products going forward that has uh, like an enhanced location awareness. Uh, th there are reports saying that the it may not be about the audio at all. Apple could be trying to get a footprint in your home to help connect and understand the relationship of things. It could be your phone and other stuff. Spatial awareness. Now, like the AirPods have spatial audio, but it's it's mm -hmm. pinned to one sitting position but eventually if you have a beacon you could start doing that in 3d uh and if apple makes glasses and other stuff in the future maybe those types of beacons help or even in the short term you know with the with talk about air tags which who knows if we'll see any talk about that today or not just the idea of these devices recognizing each other finding each other maybe um handshaking and communicating i feel like google and amazon are also exploring that in their own ways but there's kind of a also, I think, a bit of a battle for that ecosystem. If they drop the price on the mini, maybe that's also to get in the door of that game, which I don't think is really about speakers at all. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so quick check. It is 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. The Apple live stream for the iPhone 12 event has begun. We cannot restream the event right here for you on CNET. However, we are going to be talking throughout it. Please open up a new tab in your browser and uh, head to the Apple live stream. You can open it up through apple.com or also on Apple's YouTube channel. Um, make sure you uh, watch the stream there and keep us open in another tab as well as we'll be talking through. 
and uh, keeping you company throughout. So when things get a little bit, you know, a little bit slow, you might want to come back and check in with us. We'll be hanging out with you all morning here on the West Coast or afternoon with you on the East Coast and everywhere else around the world. All right, Tim Cook is up on stage and he's- I'm still looking at the time lapse. Yeah, time I still like a- oh. I, yeah, I was, how are you so fast, Lexi? Apple.com. You're in the future. Apple.com. Yeah. I'm in the future. I'm in the future. Yeah, Apple.com live stream. It seems to be, you know, I'm in Safari That's I am, too. But, yep. I'm getting oh. the preferential treatment because I get open to in Safari maybe. Good call. Good call, Lexi. Yeah. That's, That's usually my trick. Lexi. That's usually my trick. Open in Safari. That's yes. a good call. So, so try that. Um, so, yeah, we're here. We're talking about being at home even more. Oh, I, I mean, yeah. yes, we all know that we're at home. Thanks for reminding us that we haven't seen people for six months or more. Um, so, yeah, this is sort of setting the tone about, you know, home pod potentially and the products. Okay. Have you guys caught up to Tim? Yes, yes, I think we've caught up to Tim. In the auditorium, Definitely. great. Like, yeah, exactly. I, love, I love all these like inside looks at the beautiful campus that's been empty almost for a year now. Yeah. Glad they spent so much time and money on this beautiful campus, but at least they're getting a lot of airtime. It's getting a lot of airtime. They, did they didn't do like the sweep across the campus this time, but we're, they did the time lapse of like the last. We're diving months. right into HomePod. <gasps> there we go. Yes. This, is un this is an unusual. I Clearing hope this the deck. whole... I hope yeah. this whole thing has been filmed on an iPhone 12. Do you think that's the twist? Ooh, Ooh and it could be. I yeah, hope so. Could be. Could I think be. it could Especially be. with the zooming. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. Good call. Kind of looks like it could good be on call. an iPhone. I, I, it doesn't Even quite look odds. like a red camera or something. Yeah. I don't know. La it, you're it, absolutely I, right. I kind of think it's an Here iPhone. Here it is. Yeah. Here uh, we go. We're, we're looking um, at it. It is the thing that we it's expected. It's the cauldron. It is, it's the cauldron that we were Perfect. expecting. Yeah. Perfect for Halloween, guys. <laughs> yes, yeah. great time for Halloween light. timing. <laughs> All right. So mini. This is mini. What do you think our price is going to be on this? Because ninety nine dollars seems like a great price, but that seems too cheap. I honestly, yeah, seems too cheap. One forty nine. Throw it like yeah, one forty nine, one twenty nine. Oh, it's so it. it's so small. It's tiny. It is like a little glowing orb. And it has yeah. a little house next to it. Oh. Yeah. Look oh, at that. Who's this it, guy? Um, okay. This is Bob Borchers, who is uh, VP of Worldwide Product Marketing. All right. Compact, elegant design of the little home phone. It just it looks like a deep golf ball. It's, so, it's actually <laughs> quite it, cute. Actually, is it battery powered? So you don't plug it in anywhere? Oh, wait, just actually, I think you're right. Let's, well, no, I can't oh, see no, there's the cord. Yeah, there's oh, the cord. there it is. Yeah. There wishful it is. thinking, Hiding Scott. It. Wishful thinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so elegant, just hidden yeah. in it. Yes. <laughs> I feel like this is the first time that we've actually seen that sort of Siri graphic really come to life in a product. I think we kind of hinted at it in iOS 14 with the way that uh, the Siri interface kind of glowed at the bottom of the screen when you invoke it. But it's actually quite nice to see that animation getting some good airtime actually in a product. And then becoming the product because it's the same shape. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, what I was curious about is um, the audio quality. It sounds like that's definitely a focus, which I think we talked about what mark who's going to buy this and all, obviously the privacy thing but i think a lot of the the problems with the smaller speakers has been audio quality i'm not like i'm not a home speaker as i discussed expert by any means but i do think that audio like you do sacrifice audio quality as the smaller you get so if they can pull it off to do good sound quality in a small device i think you know that might be a competitive edge that it has over the said competitors that we've talked about. <laughs> right. Well, they're, they're now sort of discussing the internals of it. Amazing bass response, uh, acoustic waveguide. So the HomePod the actually was... pumps was, through the bottom. Yes, yeah. pumping through. The interesting thing about the original HomePod was that it had actually really good sound at high volumes. Like it doesn't really distort, which okay. is often a problem, not necessarily with high-end sort of speakers, obviously, but, you know, more of the smaller speakers like you were talking about, Vanessa. So if they can really um, make sure, make that part of high volume, uh, not sort of blow out, that's going to be, I think that's going to be a competitive advantage for sure. Um, computational audio. Computational audio. audio. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to yeah. say that's right up your alley, Scott. That is being invoked. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but I'm not sure it's going to be the quite like the spatial audio stuff that was going on in HomePod a little bit. The right. the S5, the, the, they just mentioned it, and this had been in the rumors as well, that S5 chip is definitely going to set it aside from the competitors because it could, I mean, if you, ha if you have that 
that powerful of a processor and the S5 chip is what we saw in the series five Apple watch and now the SE, yeah. um, you know, then that, that makes it a powerful speaker. That's a lot of, for just a speaker. Yeah, it is. Uh, interesting though, it's talking about, you know, multi-room audio and having it seamlessly, you know, play throughout the house. Obviously the idea is like, you know, the Amazons and the Google speakers of the world is to have multiple scattered throughout your house. So it had better be affordable. Yeah. Right. The Unless U1 it, yeah. recognizes yes. when your phone is nearby. There you are again. There we go. Here we go, Scott. You were spot on. Scott, you had an inside peek at this, didn't you? Yeah, there's <laughs> one right behind me. Actually, oh. no, this is, Ta-da. This is, a, this is from a, my this is from a Tiki bar. <laughs> tiki, what this is the HomePod <laughs> mini Tiki edition. <laughs> right. The, the recreation. I love it. I love it's it. It's a Chicago tiki bar. Oh, that's so good. Oh, did you? Well, okay, so it's probably up. it's similar size. It seems like. Yeah. It really seriously. I wish I had it to compare. <laughs> I know. I mean, look. Would this Scott? Do you have I, a home assistant in your house? Um. Yeah, we have an Amazon Echo downstairs. We have a Google Home Mini. Um, that's pretty much it. I just use the. I just use the echo to like turn on one lamp. <laughs> really? Is Literally, that it's ridiculous. <laughs> and and like check the weather. I've been really lazy on connecting the rest of my house and I'm fine with our old fashioned lights, which like they're literally old fashioned lights. One light. Lights. <laughs> yeah. One light, so, Scott. But, but, <laughs> that one light though, it's a very special light. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I We do just kind of use it for music. And um, I'm curious when they're going to start invoking some of the other stuff that uh the mini could do because right now it seems like it's more about siri yeah they're like talking they're talking up siri it's 20 times more accurate of recognizing it let's be honest it's still siri how many times are you going to ask siri what the tallest mountain in the world is because i mean that's really all it can do well right now is things like that the weather the timers and all of that you know continuous conversation has always been a, a difficulty with the one thing we do with our with our assistants is just set infinite timers. <laughs> like I feel exactly. like everybody's setting timers, so there's a timer going off like every twenty minutes. But and I don't that, know what they're for. Is that worth paying one hundred and forty nine, one hundred ninety nine dollars, ninety nine dollars for? I'm just gonna put it really at like a twenty dollar. Right, you can get like a twenty dollar dot. And, uh, or you just use your phone. That's also the other. You know, if you're phone. if you're using a hands free assistant too. Right. You know what else is smaller than the mini and can do the same things. Your phone. <laughs> yeah. it, I'm have, bugged by it sitting in the middle of tables with the cord. I feel like that's it is. Weird. It's very um, uh, you know the aesthetic issues that I have with that cord. I'm not I'm not a fan of the you know. I would have just like shown the cord in one shot and then just hidden it because that's what you're going to do if you have one of these at home. You are going to be trying to hide that cord as much as possible. They've done um, a very good there. job. Oh, they're going to smart home now. Okay, here we go. She's walking from one. Oh, this is a beautiful set that they've put together. I wonder if this is in like the Apple Park garage or something. It looks like a doll It's very elaborate. Yeah, it is. It almost looks like like a a Google event. I feel like Google does things. like It's like that Google um, night at home type feel. It does, but this uh, this doesn't look like it was just sort of, the Google one looked a little thrown together, you know, like it didn't even have the, the walls of a house when they were going from room it to is. room with that demo of the drums. Uh, yeah. If you remember this, this actually like they've built almost like a stage home yeah. for this, without the walls, like remove the fourth wall. <laughs> L- like literally a dollhouse. Which, yes, you know, but, but for humans, because <laughs> people fit in there. Um, do you think right. there's going to be anything else smart home related or just, are we just going to talk about home kit here? Is there oh, anything else intercom. that we might be expecting? Intercom. There's a, a, there's a new oh. feature called intercom that allows you to connect kind of like walkie talkie. It sounds like on the Apple yeah. watch that right. will do instant communication to say, Hey, come downstairs and uh, clean up because you left a huge mess here. <laughs> also you need, you need that, like Lexi said, that multi-home setup. So it's like feeding into, you're going to buy two, two for one. But wait, oh, Apple, right but wait, there's one. more, but wait, there's more free steak knives with every order. Yeah. Actually, no, um, <laughs> iPad, iPhone, CarPlay, and you Inter- can have a home. 
Oh no. Yeah, intercom goes to everything. No, imagine if you could intercom like someone in the car on the way home, like, hey, pick up like dinner on the way home. And then they didn't answer and they're like, hey, pick up dinner. And you could just yeah. keep bunging them. Like, I need this for my husband, honestly, though. I, <laughs> I really do. It's like <laughs> reminding you. <laughs> Now there's no. no escaping the voices of your family. Oh, no, geez. no. And the thing is, it's like, you know, in this time of quarantine, you do need your own personal space. So like going for a drive or like going for a walk is a nice opportunity to give yourself some alone time. But with an intercom, you're always going to be like, when are you coming home for dinner? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like the kids are going wild Get to- over here. Yeah. yeah. You just turn it off. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Also, I'm, I'm like, you, like see, I'm app. still floored by this set. I, I wonder it's amazing. You- I want to know who I want to live in this house. Just put up Seriously? a fourth wall, and I'm happy. <laughs> Please. They're oh. put, they're now talking privacy and about um, you know the claims of privacy and and the, the importance of it for Apple and that they, they they've always been uh, talking that uh, that approach versus competitors. Yeah. So yeah, and this is interesting. Okay, it only invoked. works when you're home. Sorry, when your iPhone is in the room I didn't with get you. That. And that's Did you try again. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. hello, Siri. I heard. Wow, I heard that something. was Siri was a. Uh, that was, was very was loud. Ordinary. Yeah, Siri. Um, pricing, gonna, pricing, this, ninety-nine. It is ninety-nine dollars. <gasps> okay, this is November this is a starts shipping November six. All right, ninety-nine dollars is a completely different price proposition. If it was one hundred and twenty-nine, if it was one hundred and forty-nine, if it was one ninety-nine, it would have been out of the market. But like a hundred dollars, they yes. actually stand a fighting chance with this yes. completely because this the original is- HomePod was so. Out of price, out of most people. Three fifty, right? Products. It was three fifty. Three fifty, yeah. And then there was some yeah, price reductions down. after that. But ninety nine dollars. I'm actually really November glad that the rumors are true. And Shipping then, November sixteenth. Hmm, wow! Go. Just in time for Apple's next event. No, Scott. No, no more. We'll be back, I bet there, everybody. I bet there'll be a November event. Also, keep in mind, we still don't have a release date for the iPad Air, which was announced. That's a good the point. Event. Right. So and it is, seems is, like there's. Yeah, is the idea right, that because they they're teasing sense. potentially the same chip as in the iPhone, the A14 Bionic, you know, is there sort of an idea that they didn't want that out before the iPhone? It's Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the idea was that it would all, it wouldn't steal the, the limelight. IPhone. The iPhone debuts Ooh. the chip, but yeah, it's it's been this staggered thing. I would expect now that that date for HomePod Mini mm-hmm. will be the release date for the for part of the iPhone. iPhone launch. Yeah. You heard it here first, everybody. Scott Stein with the hot November glass. 16th, yeah. though, that's a long time. I, I get waiting for the HomePod mini until November 16th, but for the iPhone, that's it seems like a lifetime away. We don't know. We, we, we don't, don't know. know. We'll, we'll wait and but see. We'll, they might we'll still see. surprise us. Yeah. 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 Actually, that's not that far off, I guess. I mean, it's, it's tough to make things this year. It's, um, mm-hmm. you know, products have been, have been, I mean, that's that's part of this staggering of why we're having an iphone event in october yeah i mean what do you guys think though should they release all the iphones together or should should they stagger them as they become available kind of like will they course out the meal or should they just bring all the meals at once well they're completely different yeah they're completely different markets too if you think about the people who are buying a pro and not interested in a mini like they'll be like cool apple has a mini but you know yes I, think, I would I, bec- only because of the camera though, because if the mini, like if the pro has a way better camera, even though I prefer the size of the mini, I would still consider getting a pro because of the camera. Here we go. Here we go. Talking yeah. The next generation. Go. So this is the 5G stuff that we were talking about. A new about technology. Here. And this is 5G, which. Lower latency and less network congestion. I mean, this is, this is all, yes, we all know this about 5G. <laughs> right. I'm just so interested that like, do, do regular consumers who aren't following the tech news like we do all the time, are they going to understand what latency is? Then we need like concrete You're, examples of, of the this. The problem is the claims about you know, real-time interactivity, lower latency, faster downloads, higher quality video. Okay. I mean, video is on a small screen on phones. I've always found that yeah. argument of higher quality video tough because I never find that the quality of my video on my phone is bad. Especially if you're on, on Wi-Fi, LTE. if you're at home right. on Wi-Fi, like there's not most, I mean, no, I, I shouldn't say that because many people around the country and around the world don't have the benefits of high speed broadband. So, you know, 5G could potentially have, you know, bigger ramifications right. than we expect, particularly in countries that have pretty poor um, network infrastructure for home broadband at least. So, you know, but it's that a necessary, to- yeah, it, it yeah, totally, it, it's a necessary step. But it's a, like you say, whether people get on board now or in a year or two or more, 
yeah. uh, and what's made of it. Um, you know, try my carrier partners vaguely right now, and and um, a partner's going to be coming on stage. Yeah, he is on stage already, and it was kind of oh, awkward. Oh, I better refresh like my brain. Really far, yeah. far away. Were, yes, it was. It was at least twelve feet away, yes. which was kind of interesting. I mean, it's good. I, think, I mean, I'm glad they're taking precautions. You know. Oh, Siri, Siri popping up uh, threw me off my time. Oh no, I'm back. You're, You're back. back. Okay, five G just Sorry got real. That, That's what he said. Okay. <laughs> We're back um, it, in real time. All right. It's 5G, 5G just got real. I, yeah. <laughs> that's the tagline for this event. But I mean, that kind of confirms ultra wideband. Yeah. So we've got confirmation. Expected. Yeah. Okay. That it's going to work on millimeter wave. And that it's going to work on all of the iPhones, I assume, because they're kind of blanket statement 5G right now. It definitely looks that's like a blanket be. statement. Yes. Yeah. It would be, I mean, yes, it would be odd if, if half were low band and half were millimeter wave, like the higher right. end ones, because again, you don't really want to be making those sorts of decisions if you don't fully understand the network infrastructure. It's too complicated for most people. Uh, you would for want to know that regardless of which carrier you were on, you were going to be able to use the, you know, the 5G capabilities. So four no, like gigabits right now, per morning. second is madness. But, but that's a, that's a, the, that's the ideal yeah, world conditions, conditions, you know, right. yeah. 200 megabits per second upload speeds, you know, great but again ideal world the more people that come onto the networks that you know the less capacity you're going to have in terms of being well, able to give those speeds to everybody i'm just saying that for me it's like my home my home wi-fi is 100 megabits per second and we have everybody 100. doing remote schooling and we're fine yeah wow. that's, yeah, that's be a good better? point yeah yeah could it be better could be a sure gig. but we could get be a gigabit. I know, I, I feel like, Scott, what are you doing with 100 megabit per second home <laughs> connection? Because I am I have a cheap home connection from Fios. But um, but it's interesting. They're showing, like, NFL highlights at a stadium, which, again, like, stadiums, I usually, when I went, I would have, have terrible network connections. Yep. But, I mean, um, this is kind of useless at the moment. All the games who's that going I to games to well. right now? AR. <laughs> all the games you and I were going to. <laughs> yes, all the games. Not. But no one's going to games at all now. No, I know, but they the will, hopefully. Being. They will eventually. Or, I hope so, yeah. yes in the future it is it and they're getting into multiplayer gaming i mean i think the possibilities for like you know game streaming between like amazon uh with luna with stadia i feel like with apple arcade it's only a matter of time before i would expect apple to get into that too with um with streaming when the time is right right uh, i'm just going to put that out there and say so i feel like there there are higher bandwidth things that could start happening um and then you get into VR and AR, which are more speculative uh, in terms of how many people are going to use them. Mm -hmm. Expanding um, into new cities. New cities. There we go. Again, though, like I'm not it's that impressed. Going. I'm not that impressed with the application so far. Like, cool, uh, you know, faster connection at a stadium when I can watch all of the different camera angles of the play that just happened. You know, that's that's one application that is not that interesting to me. I'm sure many people will care about it, but is that enough to kind of convince others who aren't into sports that 5G is the, the way of the future or the reason to upgrade an iPhone in particular? Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing for, for probably most people is the fact that they are coming up on an upgrade and the decision is going to be which iPhone to get last year's iPhone, which is not future proof or the 5G. And with people upgrading their iPhones now every four or five years, maybe longer yeah, even. That's a good I point. mean, I think that it's it's not necessarily what it can do for you now, but in for four years, if you still have this iPhone, you want to have the potential to have it be using 5G, even if it's not available right now. Like for me, the biggest decision would be, well, if I'm going to invest this much money on an iPhone, I want it to be a four year, a four year iPhone at the very least with people with, I mean, who, who was saying that they ha still have a 5S and needed to upgrade. So I think there's a lot of people oh. on that, in that boat. Here we go. Here we here's, are. here's the new iPhone, everybody. Are we ready? Which one of the Which new one? iPhone? 12? One 12? of the new oh, iPhones. Pro. Is this... I'm sure is this it the will 12? be the straight up, straight up 12. This looks straight like the 12. 12. Yay, we have our square design <laughs> back. Here we go. Everybody. That iPad, iPad like look. iPad like look. It looks like I am such a fan of this look. And if we're going to have this for the next three years, potentially, I'm I'm down a hundred percent. Sign yeah, me up. Clean. Yep. 
Still the same dip down for the face ID camera. Right. The notch That's is still the there. The notch is still there. So the only not... one size. Only one, well, this is the just this one is like for the, now. Uh, yeah, just for okay, for, just okay, for now. Okay, this okay, is okay. the um don't, yeah, oh, there'll be more. Don't worry. Don't don't do more. This to me. <laughs> We're only 20 minutes in, guys. Come on. All okay. new design. Okay. I'm just gonna talk about this now. Okay. Aluminum. So again, kind of like the iPad Pro design. I mean, yep. it's very iPad Pro like. Um, yep. Is the iPad Pro is, is oh, still two, two yep. lenses on the back. Probably yep. that telephoto and the wi ultra wide angle. Sorry, not to telephone, ultra wide and, and wide regular, angle. Yeah. So um, pretty much the square same. Square bump and only two. Yeah. It looks like a just a bigger iPhone SE or OG SE, you know? Yeah, with the yeah. the different colors and the blue, so you can match yeah, your Apple yeah. Watch to the iPhone. There you can wa match your Apple Watch to the Apple. Or well, because I, I got the blue Apple Watch I because know. I'm all about that blue. And I'm so glad that it's not the, you know, guy's Range Rover green anymore because that was my, <laughs> not my Oh, on the pro? Yeah. That military. was not my cup of tea. Really? Uh, I kind of liked it. Kind of military. Oh. Yeah, Survivor it was a little thing. too, yeah. I mean, I love green, but it Where just wasn't, it? I think it- I like the it. 70s sea foam green on the- uh, on the, the I, Yeah, the 11. 11. That's gone. It's, yeah. it's like a mint. A mint. mint. Yes, yeah, that's it's it. Mint, yes. green. mint chocolate mint chip green. iPhone. Okay, so OLED, so OLED. panel. Yay. Oh, wait, did it, was it, is it matte glass? Because I really like the matte glass. Uh, I don't know if they said that. I don't uh, think it's matte. I don't think so, yeah. Mm. All right. Well, it's it's good to see because the the regular eleven but, was the LCD. Yeah, OLED now. So OLED, this is, comes, OLED. Yeah. yay! Okay, so it's yeah, not a OLED. step up feature anymore. That's great. OLED across the board. I'm glad this has become a standard on the iPhone. Yay! Um, All right. Yes. So talking about the advantages of you know sharper, sharper text. Yeah. Higher resolution have we, compared have to the said, eleven. Have they said the the screen size? Do we uh, did it like it flew said. by. Yes. So, so this is the six point one. Are we sure about that? Well, that's why we check our transcript and make yes. sure. <laughs> Except it's very slow. Revision <laughs> HDR10. Uh, yeah, HDR10. I am so uh, get to the camera stuff. This is the exciting yes. part now. I'm I'm really oh, actually oh, so durability. Oh, here we go. This is something easier. even better, Vanessa. Here we go. Much better. Here, here come the claims. Oh, here come the claims. Oh, we're going to put them to the test. New Corning glass. Well, they always work with Corning on, a, you know, uh, custom glass. So custom. ceramic shield. Ceramic shield. This? It's a very Marvel style name. It is. It sounds like oh. another superhero. Look at this. They're like going into this whole little explanation. Ooh, the, okay. the glass grows. It what? Dramatically improves toughness. Oh, we are so testing this phone, guys. <laughs> we are so testing this phone. I'm so excited. You're going to okay, have so already, much fun. This is already kind of unexpected. Yes, yeah. yeah. ceramic shield. And that's why, you know, when we were covering the um, note, Apple got a little, little testy because they were like, we got, we, we don't say that we use Gorilla Glass. And Ooh. I, you know. Four, four times better drop, drop performance. performance. Oh, so we got to take it to like 10 feet. The strongest smartphone glass is what they said. There we go. The biggest jump in wow. reliability we've ever had on the iPhone. There we oh, go. Oh, you're so oh, bad. Oh, Vanessa, you are just so you know pumped about I this. live in an apartment, guys. I'm not going to be able to test this one. It's probably going to be Chris, but. I can so. drop it from my third floor a fire escape. I, I'm on the third floor. Yeah, but then you ever what about the people the downstairs? Like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's, it's clear. It the 18th floor, too. I but. have a totally want... clear space underneath that is not. Put ceramic no one's shield there. on the Apple Watch. That thing cracks. That. Oh have really? You, have you uh, really? Have you had issues with the Apple Watch? Um, I have. People at work have, and I've had it ding up if I drop it. Um, mm, that's yeah. more of the the the, the metal, but yeah, it, it's uh interesting. I'm excited about this I, durable I, this glass. Scrapes though. against stuff. Yeah, the scrape okay. is the thing. They just said the ceramic on the front, though. They didn't mention the back glass, so I bet the black back will still shatter, guys. Well, the the back, the the aluminum back, but the uh, no, it's I mean, glass. Like the, it's glass. It's glass? Back. Yeah, it's glass for sure. Sorry about it, that. It really? looks like it looks like aluminum, but I'm pretty sure it's glass. Really? So okay. I think the claim only stands for the front, but mm. I, we we can confirm. I'm I'm pretty sure though. I saw that it was glass. Yeah, we'll oh. have to uh, we'll have to take a look at all of the specs again. Um, right. okay. So, so more five G. 
discussion. I thought we were done with 5G, but here we go. We're back oh, again yeah. talking about more ways. Smart this is where you break mode. out your magic trick, Scott, because no, I'm kidding. Yeah, this is where we start to get a little Show bit like. Show how 5G works with a few, yeah. with a few pointers. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, like they're really so they're trying talking... to sell you onto the 5G. <laughs> what is that crazy spiked foam thing that they're standing in? I don't know. It looks like an acoustic chamber, but okay. this, this is it. Okay. Chamber. This is, yeah. A what it's a... chamber? Anechoic chamber. It looked like a crazy custom made bed. <laughs> yeah. It looks one of those like, you know, box mattress firms that are like, we have the most unique <laughs> yeah. technology to give you the comfortable well, sleep. Here's comfortable. the whole, their partners lined up, um, testing on hundred carriers. There we go. Regions. Well, this is good because, you know, obviously the standards across the world, you know, we, we talk a lot about what's available in the U S but we sort of don't quite always discuss what's going on in, you know, 5g rollout around the world. And so it is important to make sure that, you know, these phones are going to be able to be compatible across a range of different networks and rollouts in all different countries. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're talking again about 5G Verizon in the US. Um, so talking about millimeter wave as being kind of the technology that's better for denser areas and more populous Crowded areas. Crowded stadiums again, Lexi. Crowded stadiums. Our I'm not going to stadiums. We're not going yeah. to stadiums for at least another six months, people. You and I, let's be honest, you and I are not going to stadiums anyway. I'm Lexi. never going to a stadium again if I don't have to. <laughs> in the US, we are not going to stadiums. You may be that's going true. to them in other places yes that's well, correct maybe even, other, maybe even other parts of the u.s i'm not going maybe to i don't know i don't know all right so well, Lexi and I okay. for different reasons but <laughs> yeah so anyway the chip the chip which they talked about the a14 at the last apple event so this is a like our a14 recap bionic because it's also going to be on the ipad air here we go <laughs> Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. So it's showing a lot of unlocking. What is that? Oh, what is that? Into the lab. Is this how Apple unlocks with, you know, some yeah, uh, U1 slash NFC? Uh, she said, um, yeah, but I just, I just want that in my house. Like, Me, too. Me too. And on the, uh, in the office, I, I was perpetually losing my badge, right? At the office. And I kept saying like, oh, I wish we had a badge on the phone. But yeah. This is Again, okay. not in the Five office. Five nanometer. So we got some time to yeah. roll this out. Yeah. They're going to get into that again, which the A14 is a, a five nanometer, but you know, the same first on smartphone. Right. So Scott, this is just recapping essentially everything we do know already about the chip, correct? Yeah. Now they might get into a few more features that it does, but I think they, they're mentioning 40% increase compared to A13. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, this is like the continuing Apple speed efficiency uh, cores. game. Lots of cores and uh, secure of cores. enclaves. Secure enclaves and cores. That's every time I love watching these because I, it's always... Four, four core GPU. Yes. Now, this is not iPhone related, but on the iPad Air, uh, the A14 has fewer cores for graphics than the A12Z that's on the Pro. Oh, okay. So the A12Z yeah. is be is graphically beefier, it should be, mm -hmm. but the speed on the A14 um, on single tasking could be faster. We don't, uh, there were some benchmarks that were leaked that, that were reported um, on it. We don't have it yet. So, you know, we'll see how it performs. Um, I mean, phones are already crazy fast. I do feel like when it comes to iPhones, no, I don't think no one's complaining about speed. No, I think you're exactly right. I mean, there's really like the capabilities of, you know, the A series chips have just been incredible. But, so I, I think this is really just going to be powering the things behind the scenes that you yes. know, do need machine more computational learning. machine learning stuff, the computational Set. photography stuff, video stuff in particular. So, so it's yeah. a 70% faster with machine learning processing and, and between like, again, like you said, if it's, if it's, um, um, things like assistance or more importantly, things like uh, photography, video processing, uh, eventually AR or other things like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Games, time for games. All they're right. just the stalling, game Lexi. They know we really want to hear about that camera. And they're waiting for the stalling. camera. Well, we're 30 minutes in and we're not, you know, we're, we're keeping up good time. We, you know, it's going pretty fast. Ooh. There was a lot of time. Game reveal. There are three but... other iPhones. This is not going that There's... fast. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Some... a good point. Some game reveal is coming. 
Okay, Scott's yeah, excited. Yeah, kind of yeah, expected. <laughs> we're gonna leave it to Scott yeah. Vanessa right and I, like, okay, we're gonna, go, we're gonna go take our break, Lexi. <laughs> League of Legends Wild Rift. I'm not a League of Legends player. I'm sorry. I'm not I'm either. Sorry. I'm not. I'm. Either. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, I mean, I'm guessing we've been cool. talking about Michael the Chad. capabilities of, of of a such a like a big world game like League, League of Legends being available on the iPhone. I guess is is a big deal. Again, yeah. not being a League of Legends player, I don't really care. Um, right, games is talking about it now. You know, for for me though, I feel like the moment was Fortnite. You know, like you know, people playing mm -hmm. Fortnite competitively. We've already proven this. You know, like you, you have amazing capabilities already. So sure, League of Legends, but like. The, the moment of uh, gaming on on phones and esports has has long been here, so um, but it continues. Mm -hmm. um, just like some some nice gameplay, I guess. Fluid gameplay okay. on five G. It's cool. I mean, again, I don't usually play games on the go. Like um, ever, Lexi. <laughs> I do. I do sometimes. Yeah, no? You do. I guess when the days of commuting, maybe. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I play um I play a lot of like uh it depends on my screen size you know it's like I do more casual games yeah from arcade on the phone I move to the iPad for other stuff I will use Switch for other point. things yeah consoles VR I don't know I have a whole spectrum well but, well Scott we're not all lucky like you to have the yeah. options you know yeah. <laughs> spoiled right spoiled, spoiled the with choice test devices yeah okay. and I I think again like we have to also remind ourselves that we're speaking from a very privileged position where we are yeah. able to work from home yeah. and do our jobs remotely whereas Many people can't and they don't have the luxury of doing that. So, you know, commuting is still on, you know, on the cards for a lot of people. 5G's capabilities is very important to, you know, stay connected. So here's the uh, so. details on the camera. camera. 12 megapixel ultra wide F2.4, 12 megapixel wide optical F1. image stabilization. Six. So it sounds pretty similar. Pretty similar. similar. Yeah. Show Once us the again, broad camera. <laughs> but yeah. So the aperture There's is seven now, element lens. Yeah, seven element lens, which is new, better low light performance, twenty seven percent, which is very nice. Well, that's I mean, just anything. Because, anything is yeah. appreciated. Sure, that's true. So photos and videos will have less noise. Yep. Well, yeah. that's because I think the current uh, wide is f one point eight. So that's a the not a third of a stop. Computational photography. Oh, right. Computa can we Here we go. Computational, computational photography is the yeah. Event. Smart, Smart HDR, HDR three. Three. So another step up. So um, sun. So yeah, including backlit including subject. Contrast. This one's going to be good because I think the iPhone has always, you know, been good with Smart HDR, but backlit subjects in particular have always been very tricky for the iPhone, even the iPhone 11 Pro. And I know that Google just announced, you know, their ability to have better backlit illumination on faces with the Pixel uh, 5. So this is good to see it's the same night mode improves. similar performance. Night mode. I mean, which is know, good. It is good. It's not it's night mode is not great right now. But night it's, mode on the okay. ultra wide is now a thing. Night mode on the no, ultra yes. wide is pretty huge. That's cool. That's good. That's good. That selfie was very close for comfort. I wasn't yeah. too, that wouldn't be a, I don't want that selfie. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Lots so of shadows. More, Here we more go. More computational stuff with ultra wide, which last year did feel a little separated from the rest of the cameras yeah, it did. in terms of the stuff that it tapped into. Mm hmm. Uh, An interesting that, you know, I wonder if they're going to be talking about deep fusion as well, because that was kind of the big key for for the uh, yeah, iPhone video, 11 Pro video. series and iPhone 11 video. video. Highest quality yeah. video on any smartphone. That's a mm -hmm. massive claim. Well, again, lower light. Yeah, uh, we've we've been fans of the iPhone video for a long time, Lexi. That's one, we the have one thing been. that hands down iPhone does best. So yeah. to say that they're the best ones in the industry right now, I guess it's not that big of a stretch no but it's still like a marketing point to 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 bring up and oh night time lapse okay night mode night time mode. lapse night mode that's on for video. the review there if we only go. yeah see. if only we could uh, go to vegas see us and take advantage of oh wow a shotgun wedding happening here that was nice <laughs> <laughs> very nice that's cool oh, yeah. driving down old vegas i think this is night mode on video pretty safe to say <laughs> we got night mode yeah. on video which is really nice nice that, Here we that, go. I think Is I would it use night, night mode, mode on time on... lapse. It looks good. Um, it does. I and I think you're right. Hard to tell, like... but I mean, in the hands of, I mean, for a couple of years now, Apple has been producing phenomenal 
videos of these yeah. and in the hands of expert filmmakers, of not to say the cameras aren't great, but you know, you have to see how they perform. Exactly. And you know, the old adage is like, you know, the best camera is the one you have with you. But also if you're a professional photographer, you can make almost any camera look great, well, yeah. <laughs> get the most out here, of it. So uh, here it comes uh, uh, charging. charging. Okay. Well, that uh, is just they're a throwing wireless some, charger. Uh, they're throwing some uh, dislike upon wireless charging as it stands. Uh -huh. So here we go. Here is a, some sort of reveal about, uh, oh, and your Apple card in the back of your phone. And it's, <laughs> uh, of course, ah, uh, yep. okay. It's like the Apple watch. It is. Uh, it's a same... magnetic snip snap on charger. It's the same charge ring indicator that you get. It is. But I guess you also get that on the. MagSafe. There it is, the MagSafe. Oh, uh, is this, this is going to be an option. How much do you think this is going to cost? Like $99? Fifty dollars? Mm, I'd say forty nine ninety nine. It better not be more than fifty dollars. That's so, too Scott, much. I think fifty advantage? sounds right. The advantage of this is what it's magnetic and it just stays on your iPhone. Is that it, or is it also more powerful and probably faster? Okay. I, see, I think Vanessa, like we've been looking, and Lexi, yeah. we've been looking at Apple watches. I think that that's sort of paved the way. That's magnetic. Yeah. Uh, they've been improving the charge speed, and I think that it's almost going to be like an adaptation of that, but for the phone, unless yeah. I'm. I'm Dumbing interested that down to, to uh, no, I think that's a good point. But then I'm, you do have to have, like you said, Scott, just this more proprietary chargers, yes. which is, you know, I well, guess, that's what I'm interested is in. Apple's is, industry. Yeah, that, that's, well, that's proprietary true. chargers. That's true. Um, yeah. How they make their money. But it does look convenient. <laughs> but I just, it, hopefully, we don't know about, I'm sure it's Lightning plus this. I'm sure it is. Magnets, okay, well some proprietary uh so so apple yeah. first party cases here we go the, the case manufacturing industry was not ready for this one because <laughs> they're going to be scrambling to make some other magsafe compatible well, unless, cases now no no yeah. no unless it goes through the case unless this is not a special case and it can the magnet holds through well through the case they there did, we go yeah duo the duo charger. the watch and phone charger they're Nice. Finally, thank you. This is the air power up. replacement. Well, We've been Apple waiting made a, a I like, nice. Apple made a little um, flip out cars. watch charger years ago, so it almost oh. looks like that oh, plus nice. the other. Okay, there we go. Sure, nope, sure I'll I'll take AirPods, it. But your AirPods. Yeah, my the AirPods. Such Apple. Say. Yeah. Well, I mean, AirPods okay. You if you're in the ecosystem, yeah, you know, so you got to think how you're going to charge it all. I only have so many outlets, so. Right, and where are your AirPods going to go? On the back of the phone? Can they charge from the back of the phone? That's what no, I want. That's right, that's a nice feature. Yeah. Introduce that. Okay. All right. Okay. Somebody He's... has done it. She's on the roof. This lady's on the roof. <laughs> wow, that's badass. Well done. I would knock it on the roof, but good for her. <laughs> All right. Carbon neutral offices and data centers now, but in 2030. Net zero. Full Net stop. Zero. Across Meaning the entire we're, we're taking all your chargers, guys. Yeah. <laughs> They're coming no more. <laughs> and you're going to be charged $50 for an extra charger with a <laughs> magnet. But so. Uh, but I'm going to yeah, say it from okay. the roof, so it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we are, are uh, carbon, carbon neutral. neutral. All right. Well, yeah, this is the usual. I mean, Apple always does have a, uh, you know, a section in every presentation to kind of talk about the environmental uh, impact and, you know, the, the uh, iPhone disassembly robot. What was that called? Do you guys remember what the name of that robot was? Sally or something? Yeah, it had like an interesting kind of sci-fi yeah. name to it, right? Yeah. I, I wish we I had somebody who was just uh, the environmental renew, you know, renewable expert to quickly chime in right now. I'm sorry, because they always throw this stuff out there and it's very fast and I'm like, okay, it is. There's always talk about it. Um, yeah. I'm glad somebody's looking out for the environment. We just can't make sense of it very oh. well, but. Here we go. They're going to now talk about why the headphones are no longer going to be in the box and adapters. Oh, Two billion power adapters in the world. Apple power adapters, not just general power adapters. Wow. Okay. It so is nice to get headphones and in the box, but you could also just get your own. It's just annoying because with lightning, there's no standard 
three point right. five millimeter. Yes, that's true. There's no standard, and also, I mean, like I said, if people are are still upgrading from very older models with maybe even a headphone jack, I mean, this mm -hmm. kind of sucks because you've waited to upgrade your phone, and you want to be able to use it out of the box with headphones. And yeah, we've yeah. kind of gotten used to it. I mean, obviously, it's a commodity, but it's. I think you know what, what might have been an interesting way to do it would be have like allocate a small number of phones that do come with the accessories that you need, or and you, you know can what? choose as an as an extra as you check right. out. Like, make I a, need an this. Yeah. Yes. So we'll this is separately. super. This is super interesting because now also now that you don't have the charge adapter in the box, you're much more likely to then buy the MagSafe one in the store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's true. I mean, that is a clear that's a clear like put you on the spot thing of like oh i just bought the phone oh crap i don't have a charger oh, i'll just buy it right yeah. or should i so, spend twenty dollars on the wired one or fifty dollars on the wireless it's only like a little bit more maybe yeah. i should just go for it it feels like a carrot on a stick is what yeah, it does like. it is and i mean that's you know that this is part of is this classified as part of apple services business is all the dongles and all of the extra you know business. you know oh, here we go it's something's it's coming out of a entity. is this a secure here enclave go. here's the little one <gasps> it's a baby it's the little one it's another one it's a little one it's not that little it's not that small it looks like the iphone 11. right it looks like another iphone like i've seen iPhone. small iphones it fits Yay, in the palm guys. of your hand. But the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 12. Uh, but this is um, not ah, the one. So, yes, XDR. Yeah. So, this is the uh, LCD display. Why yes, do they they, which they call that? Super Retina XDR. They do not call it LCD. I know they don't, but it's just 4. like, come on. <laughs> we don't right. They kind of like don't, you figure that out later. Um, ceramic, ceramic shield, shield glass, Vanessa. Exact ceramic same shield. features minus the OLED. The OLED, yeah. Smallest, Which, thinnest, lightest 5G phone in 5G the world. 5G phone. Ah, interesting. But you, wonder, you do have one, you nice. do sacrifice one thing. So which one are we, are we drop testing? The mini or the regular 12 guys? The regular 12, cause it's, it's harder and bigger. Yeah. So the potential for more impact. Oh. I don't know. You tell me, you're gonna see <laughs> other drop queen. Both, both. Both, <laughs> Le both. Lexi, you're testing out one, I'm texting yeah. out one. And we're just throwing them. <laughs> Just, just drop everything. Well, yeah, just... iPhones, they get, oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, it looks like many it iPhones. It doesn't look seen, any, you know, it doesn't look any smaller than the, the 12 in the hand. Again, I, it's going to, this is all, it's so I difficult I would like to, to see, see the one-handed operation. That's kind of what's going to be key. Can and this is, you know, and you so know. Also, stuck, Oh, go ahead. No, no, you, oh, I was just saying that you and Vanessa can attest to, you know, the demo room after these live events being really key to kind of understanding the real yeah. physicality of these. And it's so hard to see on camera. Yeah, it is. I'm also well, like having, remembering the demo room and it's like giving me um, like stress palpitations. Like, <laughs> you just like, we don't have to deal with that this first. time. Go Let's go first. in line. Let's go get in right, line. Right. It's time. Go, it's go, time. go. <laughs> so push, push, I would say, go. keep in mind too, like you want some thoughts on the, on the LCD versus OLED, like, Apple's LCDs are great. Like they're yeah, all, the they iPads the are job. all LCD, even the Pro. Uh, holding the 11 and the 11 Pro side by side, I still feel like you don't really ever notice it. But if for black levels, you definitely notice it. Yep. And I yeah. found for um for high contrast, like if you watch like Blade Runner 2049 side by side, you'll notice it. But Hopefully I mean- you're not doing that on a mini screen, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But you will not like really ever observe that that display is any worse than- yeah step ups unless they change something surprisingly that we don't know about so yeah it should be fine I, yeah, on, on this I little be. um promo clip we just saw it in the hands of a man who pulled it out and did the one-handed thing it does look small so okay that's the yeah. first time i actually saw it like Ooh. prices 699 dollars for the 12 mini that's more expensive that's we than we expect. were thinking actually really? the, the last rumor said 699 yep and the yeah so a little bit remember more. the 650 iphone but, yeah, you know, and then we're going to six ninety nine. Okay, I mean, okay, so you can get a high phone. Then it's I mean, um, it's you know, a five G phone. And it's, it is five G so, phone. I just say is. I'm so now like the I, I wonder what's going to happen to the eleven in the lineup because it seems like there's a big gap between the three hundred ninety nine dollar iPhone SE and then the six hundred ninety nine dollar mm -hmm. iPhone twelve mini. So the iPhone eleven is going to have to somehow either come down in price Wait. to me maybe like four ninety nine maybe. Or, kind of or feels just, like a good step up price, or it just yeah, could go yeah. completely. Yeah, interesting to see. Did we Apple's see a release date that. yet? 
No. Uh, I don't think we did, no. Release date, January of 2021. <laughs> they might Come be on, announcing Tim. it at the end. After the yes. pro talk, After they're the, going to yes. talk about release dates, which yeah. means that it might be a little bit uh, staggered and, and weird. Yes. I'm very sad, happy about this the mini. Suggests, kind of suggests the mini and the 12 might launch at different times. We'll see. Yeah, well, he, he's, also, he's talking about them now. So I'm sad. See. I'm sad about. I'm happy about the size. I'm sad about the camera, to be honest, because they didn't. I mean, well, they, I have they, the they're probably saving the best for the pro line because know, they're going to talk why, about all of the capabilities. Choose, like, I don't want to have to choose between screen size and Ooh. better camera. But I, I that's get a it. good point. Well, stain, look, look, this looks like a shiny stainless go. steel finish on the pro. That's three cameras. Up. Stainless steel. Same as before. Hey guys, look, I got an iPhone 12 here and we're just kidding. Nice. <laughs> it's not as shiny, Lexi. <laughs> it's not as shiny. It doesn't Three have the light and LiDAR is yeah. what we see there. Oh, you Three, see the LiDAR? You see there? it? Yeah, the black, the, the black the black Oh, you're right, you're right. Oh, Actually, the flash uh, is the LiDAR. Here we go. But that can't be a, the mic of this one. Right, yeah. So similar to the, cool. um, the iPad Pro's array, except the iPad Pro has, um, two cameras plus the LiDAR. Here we go. Jaws is walking Jaws. us through it. Pro design. I haven't seen Craig Federici yet. He's not coming. He better be coming. <laughs> I only do these events to see Craig. <laughs> do you have a do you have a crush on Craig, Lexi? Who doesn't on Hair Force One? Come on. <laughs> who can't who doesn't love that? <laughs> Pacific Gold. blue is the new Pacific, color. Pacific blue. That is a very Pacific shimmery. Blue? That is a very rim. gold, gold, very gold, gold, guys. It's that like is a, ostentatious, yeah. my yes. friends. Ostentatious <laughs> is ostentatious gold. That's what I'm like calling it. You're gonna it. pull that out, and you're gonna be like, "Ooh, ah!" Ceramic shield. Okay, so they have the IP68. same. Up to six what? meters now. Interesting. Okay, so the IP68 on the iPhone 11 Pro was four meters. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Another detail. test, Lexi. You're going to drown yeah, this phone. It's going to be like a lot of water. testing. A lot of durability testing on these yeah. phones. Basically, Mag but this is what again. I'm telling you guys. These phones are going to last you five years. That's why people Wait, want 5G. I am so sorry. The Super Hang on. XDR is Hang OLED. On. Would you just like completely rewind what I just said before? And I totally screwed up because they're all OLED. Oh, they're all. Oh, okay. My bad too. No, no, that was my bad too. I thought it was LCD, but incorrect. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, we missed. They're all OLED. They're all OLED. I mean, you're talking about my talk, but yeah. Okay. We made a mistake. But but hold on. There's two sizes to these, and they're massive. And I I'm not happy about this. Six point five and six point seven inch. That's your only options for the pro. Oh, I thought the six point the 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 rumor was the pro 6 the, the, was six point one, but it's not nope. a six point five. Six point five. Oh, and six, all yeah. the case manufacturers who sent me cases oh. before the event, I'm gonna have to remake it because no, there's no the six point five. The there is a six point one. If that's but, the iPhone. Yes, 12. but there's no six point five in the lineup. Yes, there no. is. It's six point five and six point seven. But I mean, yes, I know. But the cases that were made oh, were based right. around the three sizes. So 5.4, 6.1 and 6.1. There we go. There you go. They were deep like, surprise. Fusion. All right. He's, he's talking about deep fusion. So this is a feature that was already on the 11 series of phones. And, uh, you know, obviously using, you know, this is so deep fusion is the computational photography method that is kind of used for not night mode and not, you know, bright sunlight situations. So it's kind of like the medium to low light uh, and sort of merging different frames to get the most detail out of the shots. So exactly. So sort of covering off the same uh, information that we knew, but now talking about uh, in conjunction with How the is this different? Chip. From what happened, from what they explained in the iPhone. Wow, well, Deep Fusion is now on all of the four cameras on oh. the on, and including the front camera, <gasps> which is actually good because the you know if you do any as we were talking about selfie, I think Patrick was talking about doing selfie video selfies. <laughs> I was, yeah. You were as well, yeah. So Deep Fusion on the front camera is actually a big deal because it F2. is a dramatic difference on the ultra wide. F one point six on the twelve megapixel wide. Yep, so 26 same, millimeter focal. As the, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the same as the uh, the regular 12. It looks like at least. That's yeah, a four, four x optical zoom. Four, four times time. zoom. They didn't yeah. talk about the zoom, a three times zoom on the iPhone 12, right? Uh, no, because they're the regular iPhone 12 only has ultra wide and wide. It doesn't right. have zoom. But uh, digital, you're talking about? You mean? 
anything yeah no, i don't think they well i mean it would have digital zoom but i but don't see this this is what i was talking about i'm kind of you're i'm torn because i love the size of the mini but then now you have all these camera fee extra camera features on the pro but you have it starts at a 6.5 inch display that's larger than the, i mean that's basically the old pro the old pro max so. it is and that's a very large phone yeah very large phone, but I mean, this is what we have to do, and we get the, the we we test them out to work out which camera is actually the one that you need because you might not need, you know, the four uh, deep fusion effect, four camera deep fusion effect, you unless you do videos on it. <laughs> well, you always want the best, but <laughs> um, okay. Talking about framing using the telephoto lens. Oh, hang on, you tell you can optically zoom in two and a half times, but where did the I thought it said four times. Five times up to what? Oh, Wait, what? hang on, the marketing, this is marketing speak. Okay, so they're talking about zooming in, but that is from ultra wide to telephoto. Now that is- Oh, uh, so that's, that's actually mean. That's tricky, yes. that's it's tricky. Three. So the telephoto lens itself looks like it's 2.5 times. And then oh. four times combined optical zoom range from ultra wide through to the telephoto. Mm. Hmm. Eh, dislike that. That's not. That's Don't kind of confusing. Apple. Don't. That's really confusing. And I, I know some us. manufacturers do put it like that. But eighty-seven percent. Eighty-seven percent. So there's a, a tremendous leap here. Here we on go. On the pro model. Oh yes. High end DSLR. Oh, sensor shift. Okay, this is an interesting one. This is something that we have really only seen on, um, on digital yep. SLRs. So sensor shift, yeah, as the name describes, the sensor moves in conjunction with the lens to help alleviate uh, vibrations and things like that. So this one's going to be interesting to see how it deals with this in video, because I think this is going to be where we're going to see the biggest use of, um, uh, of with, sensor shift stabilization, potentially. With, video? Uh, with video recording. Right. To see how the stabilization system works. Uh, this is going to be a very challenging review process two second, for us, guys. Yes. <laughs> stabilization at up to two seconds. So that's handheld? Light. Yeah. Yeah, I believe see. so. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. If if that actually if that actually does perform as they say it does, I want to test that out. But tr good luck getting your so, subject to stay still for two seconds. Right. Unless it's a building. Like, I don't you know. have any of those. <laughs> yeah, your kids are never going to stay still. That's pretty cool for low light <laughs> shots, though. Yeah. Yeah. These seem, this seems like a much greater differentiation between the pro exactly, and the rest exactly. of the line. That's what I was thinking. Year. And it's going to make our job really challenging because we're going to have to be testing a lot of features on these cameras to figure out whether it's worth the extra screen real estate and the extra money to have yeah. all these features on your phone. And I think, you know, it's going to come down Apple, to who are you, who are you, what are you doing yeah. with it? Pro Apple, Raw. Pro so Raw. Apple Pro Raw. Yeah. Okay. Pro Raw. Interesting. Raw, Raw, Raw. Pro Raw. So this is like an Apple pr proprietary raw format that it looks like you're going to be able to get the benefits of, you know, multi-frame image processing, all the computational stuff, but also then have the option of being flexible with manipulating your image without losing uh, any quality through raw format. So that's okay. a, that's, I'm, and I'm excited about this personally. Uh, well, but also, this is... I wonder if it's going to take up more space on your phone. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like these files are going to be probably fairly oh, yeah. massive because it's proprietary. Though maybe they've managed to keep it low. Right, but I think the difficulty yeah. is like, is this format going to be like raw format is, which is open, pretty much open to many third party apps to be able to manipulate and understand, or is this literally going to be a proprietary format and a proprietary way of processing uh, images? Because that's kind be. of what I'm worried about. It can't be. And if anything, I hope that they would have partnered with at least Adobe to be able to use the more yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I we'll think find out. we'll find yeah. out very, very shortly. I'm talking, I'm talking more about like third party apps that have made their business essentially out of being able to process raw images uh, in an effective way. I mean, they're showing some pretty impressive things like being able to completely color swap elements yeah. of the image, right, recovering lots of details. Okay, other professional photo editing apps. Okay, third APIs party and third API. party apps. Here we go. Here we go. All right, good, good, good. There you go. Good so it's you. like Apple, it's like ProRes for video, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's available to be read in a number of different um, programs. Something like this too, like the, the, the photo editing programs will adapt quickly, you know, to, to yeah. match this because of the importance of this format. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's basically it's, it's, we're moving closer and closer to the iPhone being able to be 
your one device to take the photo, edit the photo, publish the photo, your one stop yeah. shop. Obviously, we're with comp cameras are getting a lot better t as well. So it's competing with all the camera advancements in the market as well, the designated cameras. But I think it's trying to be your one point of everything. Yeah. Which you can't do with a DSLR or an SLR mirrorless. Not, not easily. You still need that intermediary device. And there were a exactly. few cameras that did come out. I think Scott, you were alluding to maybe Apple would finally get into an actual standalone camera. I think yeah, this could Apple be a stepping be... stone to a pro camera. This at some is point. the yeah. this is the camera, <laughs> or yeah. this is the pro camera. But they could yeah. like you know something with like other lenses and I don't know um, video studios, talk now. They're talking about video. Uh, and, and this whole production has been shot on the yeah. iPhone. Wait for it. I, Wait for you, it. <laughs> you called it, Lexi. You called it. What do you win? What do you win if you called it? Uh, yeah, you should get that. an iPhone 12. How right. about that? <laughs> HDR video recording. 10 bit HDR uh, recording. That's nice. I wonder if this is going to be. So there were one of the rumors was Dolby Vision recording, which yep. is Dolby's specific HDR format, but it doesn't necessarily look like it's going to be that. It's, it looks like its own. Uh, it's cool. Oh, maybe, maybe, who knows? This is coming up. Oh, there, there we go. I preempted a Dolby Vision HDR. <gasps> Dolby so these do record. There have been yeah. uh, reports on that, that yeah. it might it might be doing that. You is can shoot a, your own Blade oh, Runner single, seat. Yeah. Wait, did they say single frame editing? Uh, yeah. No, it's grading each frame gotta, gotta, live. Gotta, gotta, gotta. Now, this requires, uh, I don't know if you've used any other kind of Dolby Vision system, but this requires so much computational power. Uh, just not even just to record because you know, there's very few, I don't know which devices natively record in Dolby Vision at the moment, but you know, you used to have to, like they're talking about now, you know, have all this special Here equipment is. to, yep. you know, this see the, cool. the footage. Yeah. And then being able to oh. edit it on the phone. That's pretty exciting. That's I'm yeah. not, I'm not sh sure if I'm a fan of these like pre-graded filters. I hope that they'd be able to, you know. I don't know. That's what I want to see. The native camera app to be able to like create your own picture profiles. Then I'm mm -hmm. set. Then I don't need anything else. But I think you know? they, they alluded to the fact that you will be able to use third party apps. So maybe you can. Yeah. But I just want to be able to do it within the default camera app, you know? Yeah. Here we I'm go. just being Here's greedy. A... I'm being super greedy. Very... Here's some test footage <laughs> to show what it'll be like. I am a cinematographer. But the hard really part is I'm watching this on like a, you know, not oh, yeah. even in the screen. Yeah, I'm watching it on a MacBook Air that has like, you know, doesn't have the, the most amazing display to kind of show the capabilities. Okay. It's not a Dolby Vision screen. So no, by I'm looking way. forward to the, the really that you're going to be able to see the, the benefits of this when you play it back on, you know, a Dolby Vision a nice screen. screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Because right now it looks beautiful, but it doesn't show you the depth of what it can do with that HDR effect. Very nice. I mean, great. yeah. Also, I'm I'm curious about the front camera video that we've talked about too. Whether it, because they did mention it's going to have the, what was it going to have? Something. Uh, it was going to have deep fusion on the sorry on the front camera, the front camera yeah, as well. Front yeah, camera, but that's about it. I think mean, did they mention anything about the video 4K video? We haven't heard front? anything about the resolution, the sensor size of anything about the front camera yet. Yep. Uh, so okay. capture, they said capture, edit, and share. share with 5G. There we go. That's an application of 5G. Like yes. when you start having like these intense massive files. fires, yeah. files, fires, files, files, <laughs> fires of files. Fire. Because the, fi the, the video file, the video will be fire. To avoid the fire. Yes. <laughs> Lidar talk. Here we okay, go. Okay, Scott. This is your. This is all you now. Yes. Get We're excited about video. Lidar. What? And Apple's using this too to scan locations. Like they're using it to enhance 3D mapping in maps. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the you know this is sort of like the depth mapping of the real world that AR is going to rely on. And they're going to talk about that here, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see for what. Um, right now, I bet it's camera based, object and room scanning, uh, photo and video effect. So th these types of things, you can definitely use it for AR, but you could also use it to do a quick scan of a home, mm -hmm. um, putting your IKEA which there are, there are a lot of uses for. Space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seeing what so this is interesting. The, so it is going to interact with the pro camera system. It's going to work autofocus and low light, which is what Patrick was talking about. Mm -hmm. Reduced capture time. Yep, all of this thing. So the lidar which sensor is, is definitely great. one is definitely one of the things that's only on the pro model. 
Yes, yes, for sure. And the autofocus enhancement for the camera that wasn't on the iPad Pro, like this is stuff that is is camera this, integrated, right? Six x faster on autofocus and low light. That's awesome. That's good. I mean, I never really have had any sort of significant issues with autofocus on the iPhone at, at night, but there have been chat. There have been situations where it's yeah. been, you know things in the distance in particular have been confused by you know the lack of light. So if that improves that, I would be very night happy mode about portrait. That. that was it. That was a very quick. Is that what it, that was literally night mode portrait. Wait, that's a huge. That's just what like the Pixel does. So I wanted. I want to see that more. Tell me more. Yeah. One Don't just gloss well, over that. Tell me more about Nightmare Portraits. <laughs> LiDAR seems like an infrastructural thing for Apple where there are some benefits to the camera, but it's also important to build out into other devices. And I right. think the they're, they're also future proofing we... this as well as the 5G. Yeah. Um, okay, so now they're talking about more 5G applications about 5G. doctors looking at, you know, um, image files, you know, x rays, MRIs, and then sending them out again. Uh, all right. Now well, we're getting awesome. serious. Anyway, we're getting serious now about life and death situations. And um, we have to just respect bring that. it back to reality. The, yeah. Oh, jig space. Um, What's this? Yeah. They're making a house out of cardboard is what they're doing right now. Jig space does um, has sort of my air applications. So this is probably going to be, yep, a room scan. Ah, so you can so map the environment is, and then, okay. Yeah, this is, where, oh, sorry, uh, Jigspace is the, um, this is interesting. So this is like plotting out, you know, room spaces for ad hoc projects and stuff like that? Or yeah, um, this is, yeah, exactly. It's another use of LiDAR for, again, yeah. 3D scanning, overlaying objects and being able to use that for, um, for collaboratively designing and building out stuff. These these things are sort of like across the air landscape people are looking at, but Apple mm -hmm. is building some pretty precise tools into their phones now to enable that, which is um, which is nice to see. I mean, Google had been doing some stuff like that, but then had backed out of that. Vanessa, I think it's actually, well, yeah. 6.1 right. inches. I just saw that. Yes, I think it was were, 6 .5. I had <laughs> this screenshot of the 6.5 and the 6.7 thinking that those were the two sizes, but I think they were just comparing to see how much it had grown. Either way, 6.5, yeah, 6.1 and 6.7 seems like a, I guess, more doable. Yes, range. there we go. I, well, I was sense. very yeah. curious if that it was yep. really going to be like, okay, there we go. We just uh, we messed up on two things here, so please, the two things we messed up. I will never live down the Super Retina XDR. <laughs> Super Retina XDR is actually OLED on the on the iPhone Mini 12 They're Mini, and also They're, the yeah. two sizes for the iPhone 12 Pro are 6.1 for the for the yeah. regular and 6.7 for the Max. And this is They're why right. we shouldn't have marketing names for screen technologies. So we yes. don't get confused. Just tell uh, us it's as simple as that. Say OLED and LCD. You can have a fancy name behind the scenes, but I I don't know what Apple calls it versus what Google calls it versus what Samsung calls it. Let's just all call it the same thing. Right. Yep. Can we just do that? Uh, I please. still stand by the fact that the LCD looks perfectly fine too. Like it the does. OLED is nicer, Absolutely. but you will not notice in a lot of instances. Not at um, all. I mean, I compared the S, the iPhone SE to the iPhone 11 Pro, which seems like a ridiculous comparison. But honestly, the screen difference, apart from the physical size and the resolution, wasn't as dramatic as I was expecting at all. And right. you know, coming as a, from a photographer, you know, you'd think you'd be like able to see a huge difference. I did, but not. It wasn't. It didn't bother me at all. It was still the one thing I will. Fun. Yeah, like the one thing I will say is when you deal with like a larger screen and you're shooting a lot of HDR photos and videos. I bet having uh, the, the nicer dynamic range is, is going to really help. Um, yeah, it, but then it I will. think you'd want to see it on a bigger screen and, and do editing work on that too. So, yeah, but, yeah that's um, true. You don't want to be editing on a tiny screen, but still, it would help. For, okay, did for you see where you're at? With it. Did you see that there was an iPhone on a drone? Did you yeah. see that? Yes. that <laughs> that was amazing. I just slipped that in there, like typical Apple style, like really cool application, and then just like glossed over it. I want to see yeah. more about this iPhone on a drone, please. That's that really cool. Like the, that's like the product line. Now they're going to get into like um, 
price and price and availability. Okay. What do you think the price is? All right, a thousand for the the uh, regular right. pro. Oh, yeah. but it starts. Oh, it starts at one twenty eight gig. Finally, yay, nice. finally, so, yay. Thank you. Thank you. And ten ninety nine. Max. It's so nice that the storage the is prices. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah, right. and it's it's much welcome the storage being doubled because especially if you're shooting 4K Dolby Vision, imagine oh how quickly you're going to shoot. Uh, uh, I mean, pre-order, oh, pre-order, pre 16th available on the 23rd. Yeah. Okay. But the Pro Max and Mini November 6th pre-order shipping November 13th. This wow. is confusing. This is confusing because it is very that's confusing. what we're expecting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So iPhone 11 is is dropping to 5.99. iPhone 10R oh, oh, is still in the lineup from 4.99, and then the SE is at 3.99. So okay, this is this is interesting okay. now because the decision oh. about which iPhone to buy is going to be even more confusing. I think we say this it's every like, year, but it's even I think more this is where they now. tell you, Lexi, that it's all been shot on the iPhone. By the way. Uh, come on, come, come on, on, everybody. Come on. This is this is the big selling point of the keynote. Let's Please. do it. Seriously, why don't they do that? Come on, this they, is the moment. They already proved that they can do the drone, the iPhone on the drone. So Exactly. I is this it? going to happen. Are come we on, wrapping come up? On, come on, come on. No, one more thing. And then, one more and thing. then he's going to grab the iPhone like this, and he's going to be like, and by the way. Yeah, and by the way. One more thing, one more thing. This has been brought to you by the iPhone. No. A14 ship, come on. All the cameras, ceramic okay. shield. Ceramic shield was one of the bigger surprises. Yeah. That was a big surprise. That I, was something that we didn't really see talked about in all of no, the rumors and leaks that came all. out. Yeah, because yeah. remember how big the sapphire screen display rumor had been like way mm -hmm. back when we had talked about that for so long and then we just forgot about that. Yeah. Or incredible. Although this is like blows sapphire screen out of the water because. Here we go. All right. Come on. Come on, this is all shot on the iPhone 12. Really? Come on. Yeah, it doesn't, me. like you said, it doesn't look as sharp as the, the other ones from the red camera. But I, yeah. I, I, who knows? Maybe the HomePod I, Mini. Oh, yeah, that's right. We got a HomePod that. Mini. I was you kidding. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Remember the Mini? Okay, the cauldron. Eh. It's $99. Yeah. Okay. Eh, save the $99 to buy yourself a phone. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're going to buy all, like two Max Put it towards chargers. the charger. Exactly. Yeah, you, you know, you need to they, did they mention the price on the charger, by the way? No, no. I don't think so. I'm going to look no. it up now and see if anything no. has popped up on the site. All right, Lexi, well, Lexi looks. Yeah. We, we talk, Scott, because Lexi's going to look up. I'm going to look at the store. Oh, the, the store is still down. Uh, they didn't say that it was on an iPhone. Sorry, really? Yeah. I'm very, genuinely surprised because Me too. that would have been a great way to end oh. this. I agree. Unless like it says in the credits somewhere. Unless it's like, you know no, how they, they would definitely the highlight end. this. They would definitely highlight this. But it, it's right. it's if you're if you're claiming such an amazing video production, then Yes, oh, I, I agree. All right. Well, it looks like the Apple event has wrapped up and it, we were one hour and eight minutes. So who was closest? I think did Vanessa, Scott. did you say or Scott? Did, one twenty minutes. One, one hour twenty 20. minutes was your bet. I, I was yeah. way off for of that with two hours. I was Thanks expecting God this event to go. <laughs> okay, well there you go. That is so, the Apple event done and I done. Wish, I wish the last thing on this scrolling here would say shot on iPhone twelve. Pro. If only, if only. Uh, well, I was. What is the price for the? Okay. I'm Google, I'm looking up on Twitter and I can't even find it. The MagSafe it, price. It, All right, well, MagSafe. Let's look at that graphic that we have the on price screen of a, just the price again. Of a HomePod Mini. <laughs> so this is the current iPhone range. The iPhone 12 event has just wrapped up from Apple Park, the broadcast or pre-record, uh, whatever it was from um, from Cupertino. So we have the current iPhone lineup on your screen now iPhone SE from 399 US dollars. The 10R, which is now two years old, surprisingly is still in the lineup, $499. The iPhone 11 from last year, $599. And then we get into the new phones. So the iPhone 12, I guess there's now two variants of the iPhone 12, the regular iPhone 12, the 6.1 inch display, and then the iPhone mini, 12 mini, which is uh, a smaller 5.4 inch display. And then the 12 Pro line, which is a, a different camera system altogether, similar design though, but with different material and construction finishes, starting from $999. This is very, there's a lot of products to talk about here. And there's a lot of, you know, discussion that we're going to have over the coming days about like, how are we 
going to decide, like if we are consumers looking to buy one of these phones, which one is the right one for us to be to be buying? And, you know, there's so much more choice. Are we wanting to sort of buy a phone that is 5G future proofed for this year and beyond? Because that has been the big selling point of the 12 line that we've, we saw throughout the keynote, Apple really talking about all the different applications for 5G, but really in round speed, gaming, things like that. Um, and also sharing very large files. Or are we looking for something that is a more, a bit more affordable given that we are in a crazy year called 2020 and, you know, everything going on in the world means that people's budgets are getting a little bit tighter. And so there's more choice than ever in that lower end of the market. I mean, Scott, you've been reviewing iPhones for a while. Have you ever seen kind of such, I guess, diversity in the lower end of the price spectrum for iPhones? Because this seems like a, the first time in many, many years that we've seen this. Yeah, it feels more like there are other lineups like the iPad or um, even laptops, you know, where you just see this big span of, of products. Uh, it, it, I like that the that the price is dropping at the low end, or you know, had been dropping a little bit more, but it's still pretty expensive at the high end. And mm -hmm. I don't really know what the 10R is doing there. It feels to me like I would want to get the SE or think about going towards the the 12, um, unless the 11. Also, I, I feel like the 11 is one of those things that's going to go on like crazy sales sometimes. Yeah. So I wouldn't want it for like advertised price. I'd want it for like the 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 deeper discount. Uh, the problem I have with the 12 is that I wish they had put in telephoto. Uh, you know, to I think that that's a really useful yeah. feature and it still is removed out for up to $800 or more phone, it seems like a, a strange one to just arbitrarily remove. I would have rather they had telephoto and then left the pro for the extra features that may, really? that do even more with those cameras. Yeah. You mean, you mean you would take away an ultra wide in place of a telephoto, kind of like what the Pixel did with the Pixel 4? Because I think that was seen by a lot I've... of people as kind of a misstep in, in putting a telephoto instead of an ultra wide because no, I don't think he's saying that. instead of the ultra wide, it's like in addition to the ultra wide. You, so you wanted three yeah. cameras. You wanted three cameras in the regular 12. That's I what you, would. Okay. I guess you can't have everything, but I, I would okay. or I just find in everyday use in a weird way. I, I use telephoto a lot. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's because I'm shooting close up shots of things for videos or trying to frame things right. And I don't want degradation. Um, so I use it. But okay, fair uh, enough. Yeah, yeah, I guess I I'm, I'm team ultra wide all the way. So I'd rather have the ultra wide than the telephoto. But um, and I think for most people, it's it's probably the ultra wide, like you said, Lexi, but especially if, I, I agree with you, Scott, if you're di if you're doing shooting video, there's a lot less distortion with the telephoto and just a lot better. I mean, for, for video purposes, particularly. That's and a good I, point, yeah. Like for the portrait mode too, even the portrait mode, even though they've, it's gotten great on the, on the regular wide angle, I still prefer the telephoto for the portrait mode. Let's and that's why they call the... it the pro. Exactly. exactly. They'll be like, that's why you need to get the pro model. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the um, MagSafe because I've just found the prices on the website. The store is back up. Let's take a look. Guess what do we think? We thought $50 for MagSafe. It's actually $39. There you go. Oh. There you go. Surprise, surprise. $39, $39. plus the cases are at $50 though. So the so cases do, like you said, have to be Apple MagSafe. It looks, it looks like it. I'm sure this is a technology that can be catered for by third party case manufacturers. Sure. But I think but at the time of launch, it. <laughs> they weren't expecting this. So at the time of launch, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong though, if there is a third party MagSafe case out there that has somehow been preempted, let's, let me know. Let but me I, I'm, not, I'm not aware of any at the moment. So it looks like, uh, you are with the Apple first party cases for the time being. There you go, $39. Uh, and uh, Plus the case, like you plus said. Plus the yeah, case. So to... you're spending, you know, $80, $90 on getting your MagSafe equipment sort of ready to go. And that's not even the, um, let's see, that, was, that wasn't including the Apple Watch charging station. I don't know if we can find that. The, the MagSafe Duo? see if that yeah. is is that even on this i'm trying to like search around the, the store at the moment and see if i can find it but i'll get back to you and I'll let you know if we find that also i would like there. to know if they've they've reduced the price pricing for the chargers in general like the regular chargers because if now you're going to have to include that in your purchase if you're 
purchasing this for the first time or it's been a while since mm -hmm. you purchased an iPhone, you're probably going to need to include that. So I hope that they've lowered the price on the regular charger. I believe it was $30 before. Well, let's have a look. The regular I'm looking at the site right now. Um, so we have the so the 20 watt USB C power adapter is $19. Um, but that's not the rig, that's the, the faster charger. Uh, I can't find the just a regular little brick, you know, like the 15 watt one. Yeah. I can't see that at the moment, but it looks like, yeah, most people are probably going to be buying the faster charger, it looks like. And then you add on to the top of that of like a USB-C to lightning cable. Uh, yeah, it's, it's getting, it's becoming a little bit pricey if you don't already, if you're coming from a much older iPhone and, you know, we took, I mean, I guess people are still running the one, the, what was the last iPhone to have the Apple 16, was it the 16 pin charger? Those 30 are, pin? 30 pin, yeah, sorry, 30 pin one. So the, I know, I know this because I just, was, I remembered this, the iPhone 5 was the one that made the leap to lightning. Right. Is anyone still using a 4S out there and older? Maybe. Shout out. Shout out to you out there if you are. But I mean, if, if you're reinvesting in a fast charger, for example, and the USB-C to lightning adapter that you probably haven't already got with the, um, you know, earlier iPhone 5, iPhone 6, et cetera, you know, you are looking at a little bit more of a financial outlay to kind of get yourself up to speed. Uh, even though, you know, sorry, I couldn't help with the speed puns because. What, one small uh, rant too, like, you know, a pro feature for a pro phone would be USB-C. Like, why would that not be yeah. USB-C phone? Yeah. Why would really? why would it though? Why would it? Because there's so many. Think of all of the uh, things in the Apple ecosystem that have you know iPad and MacBook aside. We're talking about you know things like the AirPods. We're talking about you know all of the myriad of chargers. The iPhone itself is still you know, lightning. And I think it will be for a time being. The MagSafe system is really interesting because I think this is kind of our first glimpse into what a cable-free iPhone might involve. And yes. I don't know if we saw, did we see anything about the speeds of the wireless charging of MagSafe? I don't remember if there was like a wattage uh, that was quoted, um, but I, I would like to find that out because, you know, as we all know, yeah. wireless charging, the standard, you know, Qi charging is somewhat slow it is you know it's getting better and better and evolving but it's still not able to replace a wired connection in terms of speed of getting your device up to charge so yeah we'll see i mean this is all stuff that we're going to circle back on and you know find out more about as time goes on so all but the different you know iPhones. It's getting ready for also, Lexi, is the portless iphone yeah portless talking. right so mean potentially yeah. like get one or two generations ready with MagSafe and right. then no USB-C connections. This is a prop. Yeah. yeah. And then go, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Scott. I don't think USB-C is ever coming to the iPhone. Sorry, Scott. But also I think about this. Uh, I'm ready for USB-C to not come to the iPhone, but you know, like Apple has experimented for a while with, with smart connectors on the iPad and the data speeds on those things are not that fast. Uh, they, they're mostly used for things like keyboards, but why wouldn't it be something that with a MagSafe could eventually evolve to allow pretty fast data speeds so that what you want to do is charge it, dock it, then it could like go out to all your stuff. That seems like the logical solution that they could enable, uh, like you said, to go to a port free or one that kind of blossoms out to all those ports. Uh, I just think USB-C is a bummer because it, it really is helpful for iPads. And I think that as a device, you're going to be running around and plugging in a lot of things um, for a pro. It, I, I know why they didn't include it, but it just, <laughs> well, come on. Like they should just put it on. Come right. on. That's a come quote on. from Scott Stein, 2020. Come on. <laughs> right. USB-C I mean, already. <laughs> like it's, Is that it's what nice you were most disappointed personal. about, Scott? Is that like if you've had to, is that what you were most disappointed about today? Maybe. You know, the, I mean, the phone power, they all look great. I think maybe to me, the, the feeling I had coming out of this was that they, the camera looks promising. A lot of the other stuff feels, again, like an incremental bump. But I think the 5G potential is something we've heard about from tons of companies. So we're still at the point of like, what, what does that really mean? What, is it, what does it matter? 
I feel like the pitch Apple made for 5G did sound a lot like the pitches that every other phone company made. So I didn't see a lot of differentiation there um, as far as why 5G. And I think that's the, I mean, at some point it's just gonna be on the phone you buy. And then you right. just say, okay, it's there, I'm gonna use it. And maybe that's what Apple is leaning on is that fast forward another year and you're not thinking about it, it's just there, so. We didn't get two question, answers to, to another question though, the refresh rate. And right, we didn't yeah, see that. It's not there. No portrait mode video. So I think we did not get the refresh rate we wanted because, or else they probably would have mentioned that. Yeah, unless it's so, you know, as we were talking about, like a, a promotion style with a variable screen refresh rate. That's you know, like I think it's is it 120 on the iPad? I think, yeah. and then yes. that's variable. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I agree that that would have been a bigger deal if that was present at all. Interesting to did see. Did they if make it's a big deal about it during the iPhone um, event? Uh, sorry, app. Uh, iPad event, Scott? I don't remember. Oh, yes. Oh, Our yes. motion was a big thing, right? I remember but that. I think that, you know, with things like Apple Pencil and with content creation, uh, graphics and, and art, I think that it, it might have an extra benefit there in terms of, um, you know, creating this sort of like smooth flow between like what you're doing on the pencil and what's going on with animation and oh. creating this fluid feel. I think I kind of feel like that's what Apple always was envisioning rather than buttery smooth operating system you know like we, i think a lot of people look at 120 and be like look how fast my apps scroll across the screen <laughs> like, yeah, i don't yeah. think that's like part of what they're thinking about um not to climb in try to climb in apple's head but so that might be part of it too that it's just not a thing it, it might it might require you know more infrastructural work that could affect battery life or size yeah. of the phone i have no idea um that's kind of, that's not really a bummer to me. I don't really think about 120 Hertz as something I've been like screaming for. It's a little surprising again, like when you're dealing with $1,100 pro phone, you do expect like, okay, well, why don't you pull out all the extra stops and give me all those pieces because they're out there. I agree. And I think that the use case for 120 Hertz is not necessarily scrolling because yes, it looks nice, but you know, once your eyes adjust to it, you know, it looks like any other phone. It really, they think the application of things that people don't really talk about for a high refresh rate screen. Like if you're playing back video recorded at a higher frame rate, for example, at 120 frames a second, watching that back on 120 hertz screen is beautiful. It just looks fantastic. And I think a lot of people, it's a very narrow use case. And I completely agree with you, Scott. I think that like people are probably not kind of thinking about that as a priority. The trade-off would potentially be battery life, like we've seen from other phones, such as Samsung. Which we didn't did hear trade. about either. No, we didn't hear about, it's a really good point. Yeah, we didn't right. hear about battery life at all. So, you know, are oh. we getting any kind of improvements in battery life? I mean, iOS 14 yeah, has right. kind of been a little bit unsteady on its feet, the first few versions in terms of battery life, at least on the 11 Pro that I can speak to. So I'm really interested to see, you know, if we are going to see any significant increases in battery life or is it going to be more of the same especially if you're on 5g think about how that's going to affect battery life and performance overall so if much they more didn't testing. mention it yeah, yeah if they didn't mention it good. then it's not an exciting improvement yeah or at all <laughs> or at all or it, yeah or it, have, or it could have dipped i didn't look at the final specs and again like you know i should be keeping a monitor up in the same time and so people might be seeing stuff already up there and saying come on that's already that's already listed but I would imagine it might vary as well, depending on the model. where you're at. And, yeah, yeah, I'm just I'm and having a quick look and patients. seeing if um, I can find on the specs uh, if anything about. So the, the the numbers quoted by Apple video playback up to 17 hours on the Pro and 20 hours on the Pro Max. So that kind of does that sound does that kind of correlate with the numbers that I'd have to look at the side by side Apple quoted numbers because Apple never talks about battery size they only ever talk about no. numbers in terms of hours and things like that so we'd have to go back and correlate with the 11 Pro I mean, and those see numbers if that's sound similar. good those they numbers, sound those good, numbers sound good. Does they sound, they sound good. better is the question yeah, yeah. well they sound they at least as good what was the what was the estimated um uh, estimated for 17 hours for the 12 Pro and then 20 hours for the Pro Max. That's just video playback, um, just on device, not streamed. What about the, so the uh, iPhone 11 Pro? The iPhone 11 Pro was 18 and 20. Ah, interesting. Oh, okay, interesting. So maybe sucks. maybe Sorry. a little less again. Again, the real world performance is completely Equivalent. different to the numbers. No, but if if you're already dipping down one hour, I mean. 
you and I have the pro Lexi. I mean, like to, to sacrifice one more hour of battery life would it's not that's for video best. playback though that's not necessarily like standby time and calling and things like that sure. those numbers are broken out separately so the iPhone 12 mini is 15 hours video playback and the uh, the regular 12 is up to 17 hours so it looks like you're getting pretty much the same according to Apple at least battery life between the uh, same 6.1 inch display phone so the regular 12 and also the 12 okay. pro so oh, interesting uh, and, and the battery boost last see. year was nice yeah, yeah. that's true um so prices on the um, screen as you can see you know that's the final look at the iphone lineup and uh i want to wrap things up fairly quickly but i just want to get your like final thoughts scott and vanessa on you know the event in general things that you were excited about not so excited about and just kind of like some final takeaway things that you're looking forward to you know diving into a bit more so I think that what we were saying before about, you know, how often you buy a phone definitely factors in. I, I agree that it's like a, a four or five year decision for a lot of people. Um, so the day, the days of like, oh, what does the next phone have that I've got to upgrade to is not the case, especially at these prices. So, you know, I think phones are already great and they, they kind of, it's what they enable beyond that that gets interesting. So it's like peripherals and other things down the road uh, and apps. The, the the thing about the camera is the most interesting part I, I'm curious about. How much better is the camera? How much more pro is the pro camera uh, for the stuff that we do? Does it, does it feel like something that you'd want to invest in to get work done remotely? Because now, like, uh, we're in that boat now. We're like, you know, I don't have the same type of access to uh camera crews or other things as before so i might be doing a lot of this myself um that becomes interesting uh 5g is just not interesting to me so mm -hmm. i feel like i'm when i need it i'll i'll need it but um you know i get i get i get what it's offering you know i don't i don't really feel like i need much faster speeds at the moment for me how about you vanessa um i mean i i agree with scott i think with everything he said, I think the most disappointing thing for me was not having the reveal at the end that it was all shot on the iPhone. Because I, I know, think, oh, I know, and, and I, I didn't even talk. I didn't even think about it until you pointed it out, Lexi. But I think the ultimate testament of how far we've come with the iPhone and being able to replace the iPhone for a professional camera is them turning around and being like, "We are, we are so meticulous when it comes to our videos and when it comes to our." Uh, anything that we put out that we have the highest standards and we've been shooting this all with an iPhone. And that to me is going to be the moment when Apple has crossed over into the pro, the true pro cameras and Apple will probably, it will be Apple, the one that's going to tell us that. And I don't think we're there yet, but obviously very exciting to test out all these features on the pro camera. I'm also kind of disappointed that there's such a broad, a big distinction between the sizes now, like the smallest size is the 5.4. And then the smallest size that you can get with that pro camera is a 6.1 display. So, you know, that was a little bit disappointing for me, but ultimately it's good that you have all these options. I think for the first time we do have iPhones at every price point. And to be honest, like for most people, I think, I still think the SE is such a great deal um, that I think that's, that's, Probably in the lower range, the biggest competitor there. Just forget about the old models. Get the SE, unless you know you're interested in the Pro or any of the 5G phones. I think 5G. I know it's not a decision maker for you, Scott, but for me, it would be if I am looking at the next five years, which which it seems like now they're durable enough to last five years. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, TBD about That's the battery exciting. life, but <laughs> yeah, the um. Exciting. Yeah, the ceramic shield is really cool. I mean, durability is great to have, yeah. uh, to keep to keep pushing forward on that. And you're right, like, it, look, it, it feels comforting to say, look, if this has 5G connectivity, okay, maybe this is something you get and stick with for a while, provided that somehow the cellular connectivity connectivity in the tech doesn't continue to be tweaked and altered right. in the next few years. And that's true. And then, and then maybe and then that's you, why you get the SE, because then you kind of hold off and you wait for it to, for it to get better. But I think, you know, the yeah. durability for sure. And maybe we can go caseless with this. Patrick will be very excited. What did you get? What, what was your favorite and disappointing? Um, 
Oh, okay. just quickly, I think the, the best part about this uh, whole iPhone reveal was that we're going back to a design that's the tried and true, that's the classic design that I think it's been so overdue to have a full redesign of the iPhone. So I'm excited, even though it does look very similar to, you know, the iPads and everything. I was expecting that and I was very pleased about that. The camera technology, I think, is really going to be something that we're going to see evolve over time. Like, I'm not sure if there are going to be any extra additions like we saw, say, Deep Fusion came, you know, with an iOS update a little later on down the line. But I only expect the computational photography side of things to improve. 5G, it's like they had to have it. Like the event needed to be yeah. about 5G <laughs> because otherwise it would have been like, what else is the big selling point about the reason to upgrade now? So, you know, I understand the exactly. reason to put the 5G in the whole event description. Um, overall, I think this is a, you know, it's a great, iterative update um, but there's a lot of really useful things that I think are going to make this such a huge update for people like you, as you said Vanessa who are upgrading after maybe three four five years of having their old iPhone then it's really going to be seen as a big step up so I'm really excited to dive into you know all of the new phones that are coming out and you know there's no demo room for us to run into this year so we're actually going to have to wait to get our well, we're going to have a busy next couple of weeks guys it's going to be a Come lot on. of testing it is. And can we just say, like, we still don't know the iPad Air release date. Um, oh, yeah, so I forgot about that. I forgot about when that. When is that coming? We all forgot about it. So that's coming at some point. It's supposed to be coming this month. Also, we never heard about uh, AirPod Studio headphones. Oh, yeah. Um, There's a lot AirTags, of things. Yeah, AirTags, all AirTags those things. AirTags were no show. Still the, on the, the table. Any future Mac stuff. I still think there's going to be a November event or a November, <gasps> like, product Ooh. drop. Well, there's something something more to look forward to left in this crazy year that we call 2020. Um, I think Maybe we're gonna wrap that things one will up. Be filmed. That It'll might be, be yeah, time. exactly. Well, I think that's it for, for today. Thank you so much for joining us here on CNET Live's stream of the iPhone 12 event. I hope you had a great time. It's been so fun <laughs> hanging out with you today. Nice big stretch. Let's go grab ourselves a cup of tea, cup of coffee, dive into all of the specs. Make sure you keep it locked to CNET.com, all of the deep dives into all of the the tech, the iPhone 12s, all of the different ones to buy, the HomePod mini and all of the extra details about that. So stay tuned for lots more coverage coming up soon. Scott and Vanessa, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Lovely so to much see fun. your faces, this is guys. Awesome. Thank you. I know, it was so much fun. Thank you so much behind the scenes to Stephen Beecham, Brian Van Gelder and Bonnie Gannon for holding this crazy ship together. Thank you so much and take care. We'll see you maybe in November for another Apple event. Who knows? <laughs> I'd All love right. to see your faces, but. <laughs> love to see you then. Bye. Yeah. Bye.